Alexa. Alexa. Alexa, play Life is Life. Alexa, play Life is Life, Opus. Welcome to the show. This is Encounters, the morning edition on a Friday morning, Reverend Nega to see you. And uh, welcome to our show this morning. And we're going to start off with a few things. We'll do interviews this morning. I hope you, last night's show is on my YouTube channel, Astro Command Spaceship News. So if you uh, missed anything last night, it's on my YouTube channel, Ashtar Command Spaceship News. So uh, we'll be hanging out here for a while on the show. This is our morning edition for new people. You've heard about our show. You're watching the show. This is Encounters, the number one UFO spiritual talk show on social media. I'm your host, Commander Alion for new people. Hey, Mercury Man, good to see you up in Vermont. Uh, Alexa, play Life is Life. Here's Life is Life. By Opus on Amazon. So here's our Amazon music little bit of theme music this morning. Would you like to stream from here instead? And uh, yes. So I'm going to play a little song here. This is our morning theme song on Encounters. Well, for this morning anyway, this song, this will get you awake. This is a group called Opus, and I think you'll love this song. Live is life, and this is Encounters. It's a beautiful day out here in New England. I hope it is where you are around the planet. And uh, I'm host of the show here, host of WESU-FM's Cosmic Eye Radio on NPR Radio every Sunday morning, 11.30 to 1. I'm a contactee. I'm with the Ashtar Command directly. I don't channel anything. I'm a telepathic communicator. And I'm also involved as co-coordinator for Ashtar Command contact group here in New England. <coughs> Good morning, world. We can listen to this song for a minute. Good morning. Uh, Lisa, good morning. Jessica, good morning. Paul, Jackie, Jolene, Angela Price, Jay Z, Ascension Master, welcome. Q Turk. Gloria Stell, good morning, good morning everywhere around the world, wherever you may be. Iggy Man, welcome to the show. Odd Win or something, Odd Win. Mish Mish, good to see you, Mish Mish. Julie Z, Linda. Antonio, welcome to the show. Nurse Elizabeth, welcome. Russ Liu, X72 Mini. Dallas Smith, welcome. 88, Chi Chi. Uh, Petite, uh, Mimim. Serendipity. Mystic War. New Jersey Angel. Rolo 34K. Steven Unger. Cool Diamond, user 845. Fritless Brown, welcome. Everyone coming in here. Just good morning to the whole world. Uh, this morning, we're going to be showing you some video of three spaceships. This video was uh, recorded in October. You're gonna, this video is going to blow your mind. 
And uh, the beauty of these circular spaceships are just beautifully off the water. I believe it was off the coast of New York State near Brooklyn, Long Island area. And this is an impressive video. So I'm going to try to show you video footage of the spaceships that are starting to appear. And this was, I think, middle of October or like uh, a few days ago. Country Girl, welcome. Thanks for the likes. Anna, thank you for the share. Jessica, Bobby, Lobo, welcome to the show. Pure Life, welcome. Alexa, play ambient space music. The station, ambient, on Amazon Music. Okay. And you're watching Encounters. Uh, hey, one Toyota, good to Thank you for the ice cream. I appreciate it, brother. Jose, welcome Johnny, everybody in here. It's good to have you all with us. Wherever you are, you're not too far. Many blessings to all the people around the world. Please share and like. We're at 1.4 thousand. We hit over 200 thousand last night. We hit over 200 thousand last night. It was crazy. And the night before, over 200 thousand. The Ashtar Command was tapping everybody. Almost half of the audience's phones were tapping. The other half weren't. Uh, Terry, good to see you. I uh, I am just me. Good to have you with us. Thanks for the share. <clears throat> we have our apple cider this morning. And if you watch this show, it's always a cosmic journey. If you watch this show, you'll be transferred into a place of space and consciousness beyond any other UFO show on social media right here. I saw something in the skies last night and the day before, I swear. So I'm going to start bringing up guests. Vicky, I think it's Vicky, we'll bring Vicky up. And the way this works, before I bring people up, you have to be over 18. That's a given. Uh, no kids on the show. No smoking, no vaping, no drugs, no drunks, no paranormal discussion, no politics, and no religion. And uh, that's the deal. So we're going to follow Vicky, and we're going to try to bring Vicky up here. Vicky, you're our first guest on Encounters this morning. If you come up, just press the accept button or go to the multi-guest option. Okay, we're going to have Vicky on here. And good morning, Vicky. Good morning. Good morning. I'm glad to have you on our show. Uh, whereabouts are you located? Well, I'm in New Jersey. I'm glad to be here. I love New Jersey. Oh, you're in New Jersey. Okay. So tell our audience about your story, about what happened. Well, I was like on discount for the last week, but it's been a really big can you can you talk can you talk into your phone more? You're a little bit low. Are you able to talk closer to the phone and bring your volume up? Yeah, try to bring your volume up on your on your phone level. Just press the volume control. It should bring it up better? the volume. Oh, much better. There you go. Okay, so I I was um, I'm actually on my way to work now. <laughs> oh. I saw something in the skies yesterday because and the day before i don't know if i like drew it to me because i was obsessing over it watching videos on TikTok for the last four nights but yesterday night and then the night before i saw the same thing first it would like show really vivid and then it would disappear like it would fade in and out red green and blue and i swear it looked like it was a plane at first but then i'm like wait that's not a plane because it's blinking really really fast but it's just, and I'm in New Jersey, so you hear the background. It's so much going on. Yeah. <laughs> but ha, ha, it's, go ahead. But it was definitely something, man. I'm, now, I really, two I, and, and two nights in a row for you, Vicky. So mm -hmm. let me ask you a question. So you saw this, and you're watching Encounters, everybody. This is our morning edition, 
our big show, our show our show is really popular uh, at night we have we had like over near 500 people last night on so I want to ask you um, do you have a feeling when I ask people these questions like when you see a spaceship like that uh, how do you feel like what like some people say yeah I feel really good about it what, what do you feel from the energy of looking at that multicolored craft did you feel like it obviously you're seeing it twice in a row uh, I feel you have a I connection. I felt like I to... was connected to it in some yes. way. I don't. I can't. I don't know. Like I felt like it knew that I was like watching those videos and like I don't. I can't explain it. I couldn't even sleep, but I felt like yeah. it was a connection. Like it was drawing me yeah. to it. I, it's yeah. so weird. So I think uh, this, and uh, one of the things, if you knew my show, which is on at 11 o'clock normally at night, and we'll be on tonight, and uh, Saturday's Astro Command Q&A on Saturday at 11. So I have a feeling the reason why it came back twice, you know, if it was just a random thing where you saw it and that was it, but it came back to you twice, and you saw it twice, correct? Mm-hmm. Same and this was how, And which night was it? Was it last night or the night before? It was last night and the night before. Now, mind Two you, nights in a row, yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, but I was, like, for the last four days, I was watching videos on TikTok at, from, like, 10 o'clock at night when I lay down till maybe 3.30 in the morning. Like, so I don't know if that was something, but I learned a lot from TikTok. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, I'm glad you're, you're here. Uh, so I have a feeling... I have a feeling you have a connection. I think the beings on this, understand there are, there are people on the ships that you're seeing in two nights in a row you're seeing. So it's not the ship itself, it's the beings on the ship. So the one thing I want to just make clear, I have a feeling you're uh, connecting with your star family. I don't, you know what a star family is? Or, is, you know, like, a, a, do you consider yourself a star seed? Do you know what a star seed is? Uh, oh, I lost her. Well, she's mobile. Oh, darn it. Ah, <laughs> uh, that, that, that's really a bummer. I lost her. She's on her way to work. I think she's driving a car, so. Ah, uh, let's see if I can get her back on here. Uh, okay, what happened to her? Vicky, if you're still there, uh, I lost you. You must be driving i know she's driving to work so that could be she might have lost uh internet connections or something you're watching encounters well that's interesting i was going to tell her that uh that's probably her star family but we didn't get to get into a, a deep discussion about that well i want to thank vicky for being here i don't know where she is now but she's definitely not here and please uh, remember to tap the screen when you see the numbers 2.4 on the top that's the that's from people tapping. When you tap the screen on my show here, it brings the hearts up. So if you didn't know how to do that, you just all you have to do is tap your screen. So I'd like to see everybody do that. Please share the live with people that you know are completely open and responsible to true adults uh, that wish to participate and, and watch the show. And uh, good to have all the new people coming in here. You're watching Encounters, the nighttime show that we usually do. It's at 11 o'clock, our big show, and we're trying to do some morning shows here once in a while. And if you have a story to tell regarding uh, anything you've been seeing lately in the last few nights, uh, if you've been seeing increased activity in your part of the world of UFOs or spaceships that are not our government's uh, craft, good morning, uh, Jenny and Jenny, good morning to you. Uh, we'd love to have you up. You have to be over 18 on the show. Uh, no smoking, no vaping, no drugs, no drunks, no paranormal discussion, politics or religion, no kids on the show. But you have to be over 18. Uh, Loretta, thanks for joining us. Ja, I think it's uh, J. Jeremy F. Good morning, everybody. Good to have you with us. Woody, welcome to our show. If you're new to the show, this is a real, actual program. Uh, I don't, I'm not like this person on TikTok randomly doing something and having a whole lot of people arguing with each other. We actually are a professional broadcaster. I'm on WESU NPR Pacifica Radio Sunday mornings at 11.30 to 1. I'm a contactee. I'm with the Ashtar Command. If you're new to the show, I'm a starseed, and I'm involved with our CE5 group here in New England. Uh, I'm co-coordinator 
of our C5 group. I have a great, I have a large background in the subject. I have a contactee from the 1960s. I've had my own experience as a kid. So I know a lot about the subject. Loretta, welcome to the show. Glad to have everybody here. And uh, as you know, things are happening. We're gonna show this video. I'm gonna show you a video of a really beautiful video here. If I can get to it, let me see here. I'm going to, okay. Oh man, let's see here. Greetings, great awakened chosen ones. Oh, I got it. So I'm gonna show you a video of, a, of three spaceships over, let me see what this is right now. If I go backwards here, can I see it? Yeah, this was uh, taken October 10th at 6.50 in the evening, 2024. This person went to watch us, uh, the, uh, they're in Brighton Beach, in Brooklyn, which is a beautiful area. It was uh, the night that the Aurora Borealis came out, but you can't really see the, in the pictures. Um, so this person was trying to make contact by CE5, and uh, then without meditating or inviting them on any way, they were there. So this person, without doing a CE5 in Brighton Beach in New York State, right on the Atlantic Ocean, uh, on, I think, in the, uh, Brighton Beach, I think it's an inlet, uh, you're going to see what's uh, three beautiful spaceships, and uh, the video is pretty clear, so we're going to show you this video right now. So let me just do this here. It's a minute and 59 seconds long, and the video I'm going to show, let me do this here, is for educational purposes only, so in case TikTok goes nuts. The video I'm going to show is for educational, for entertainment purposes only and educational purposes only. So I'm going to go uh, and switch the screen here. I'm going to do the best I can for you. And we're going to see this spaceship video. So give me a second here. We're going to do this. I'm going to switch the screen. Just a minute. I think I've got it. Okay, so this is for educational purposes only. I'm gonna let you hear this right now. Brighton Beach in New York. This is, half, this is October 10th at six, over 6.50 in the evening. Watch this, this is really a very beautiful video. This is uh, Encounters. The spiritual UFO talk show, and this is real footage. You're going to see three craft. all about disclosure this is for entertainment purposes only look, look at that And you're going to see a lot more activity. There's two There's two ships right there. There's three ships, three spaceships. Brighton Beach, October 10th. Okay. Let me uh, do this here. Give me a second here. So that is October 10th, 
And again, uh, that there's many more video uh, videos that I that I am looking at uh, videos that are being sent to me. Uh, I am looking at all the UFO footage. People are having sightings all over the world that they're in the you know, next two weeks. You should be able to see things. I learn how to do CE5, get the CE5 app. And this person wasn't doing a CE5 and the ship showed up in Brighton Beach off the water off the coast of New York. And we have Benjamin 316. Uh, let me see who that is. Benjamin 316 on encounters. And no one's spiritual UFO talk show at night. We had last night, uh, I think near 500 at times. Uh, Benjamin, welcome to encounters. Good morning, uh, TikTok. How's everybody? I hope you and yours are doing well. Much love and prayers. Again, yes. uh, you know, want to ask, uh, I don't care what the color your skin is or who your God is, but whoever your God is, and that's to pray for our Southern brothers and sisters. Um, I just got back um, from Asheville area, um, Asheville, uh, Huntsville, uh, Chimney Rock. And I've been down here, I don't know, a little less than two weeks or maybe two weeks. And, and I apologize, I'm sleep deprived. I'm an avid fisherman and I live on Long Island, New York. And let me okay. tell you, there's a lot, there's a, a lot more than three. Okay, based on what I saw last night. Last night. Okay, tell us about that. Um, okay, so without getting too much into it. I'm going to give you the score, okay? Uh, being a Navy man, uh, active, um, you know, aircraft, you know, doesn't work like that based on what I've seen. Like, uh, meaning if there was a human body in that aircraft, it would be smashed all over the wall, all over the walls. Like, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. yeah. Uh, so, um, you know what I mean? Like, be, you know, having yes. a brain in my head, eyes on the scene, boots on the ground. Like, yes. I see that, like, you know, like, you know, like, logistically, I, there's no way this, any of this is man-made. You can't tell me otherwise. No, I agree with you, brother. Absolutely agree. I've, I've seen, since I was a kid, hundreds of different UFO-type things or spaceships since the 60s when I was a kid. I had direct encounter preteen when I lived in Long Island. Uh, I mostly lived in New England, but I lived a little bit of my life in Long Island initially. And I had my parents downstairs, my older brother, and I went upstairs and I didn't know why. I just left the room. I said, I have to go upstairs. Went to my brother's room, opened the wooden shades, and there in the cul de sac was a, a flying saucer type craft uh, with men and women that were human. They were taller than the average human, about probably eight or nine feet, somewhere in that area. And uh, they were telepathic. And the one thing they said to me is that I'm not from this world. Now, I heard that in my consciousness. And uh, they said, you're not from here. And uh, it was the most wildest thing. And then I went downstairs so excited to tell my parents and my brother. They said, oh, yeah, we'll come up. They never came upstairs. So I went back up. I was frustrated that they didn't come upstairs. I was a little bit uh, upset. Then I got over being upset. Then I went back to my brother's room and opened it up. The ship was still there. And they said that you're not from here and we love you. And uh, they were they were men and women with light blue spacesuits. They had an energy system in the craft that was blinking like crazy. And there were young adults, what I call young adults to me, a young adult, their children. Some of them had their kids with them on the ship. And um, I never forgot that. You know, I, I've known, I remember that story all my life. So, yeah. Uh, uh, what I see, uh, again, boots on the ground, eyes on the scene, all right. Um, it's ramped up quite a bit um, in the last couple of months. Uh, and you got to, again, and I'm not going to, don't want to dive too much into this, but again, right. active, uh, you know, and I, I don't want to get your page shut down either. So I'm going to try no, to. I don't want that either. No, I believe. Yeah, no, I'm, like, not, uh, I'm not trying to be fresh and, or disrespectful. No, 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 you're being good. You're being good. Yeah, you're being I'm like, we know how everybody. TikTok works. So I you have to do, be careful. Yeah, I'm smarter than that. I see these people coming yeah. up from miles away. But what I'm going to tell you is that if you're active, okay, you're looking constantly for threats, okay? All right, so now I'm looking at the skies, okay, and it is ramped up. 
okay? And there's a you know, there's a country that starts with an R. There's another country that starts with a C. There's another. Yeah, yeah. All right, you see where I'm going with this? And oh yeah, that I completely get it. Happening, okay? Because my belief, okay, is that they are very concerned because they also know the score. You understand? They know that. You know what I mean? You, you understand where I'm going with this? Yeah. Well, I, I definitely understand. One of the things I will say, I work, uh, I actually am part of what is called, uh, I actually have space family on a ship right now. I am, I'm, I'm human. I have a job like everybody else. I do everything. But my consciousness has been activated recently, even more so. And I tell them to communicate off planet with uh, my space family. Uh, and that's different than channeling anything. I don't do any of that. Um, so I, I think I was I just when I became an adult, I was really more activated now I'm more activated. And uh, I can tell you that the Ashtar command, which I am very connected with, uh, I came here as a star seed. Uh, and I have had human parents, my parents have passed my earth parents, but I have cosmically, I have, um, how do I, how should I put it? My biological cosmic parents are on a spaceship right now. And when I'm live here, uh, my show is monitored on their ship. They can watch my whole show right now. They can see everything. Yeah. Um, I haven't had that experience. All I can tell you is again, like, you know, boots on the ground, eyes on the scene. Yeah logistically like this is what i'm seeing here on long island new york yeah and, uh again long island new york because i used to live there ever since the 60s long island has had many many uh, spaceship what i call non-terrestrial sightings uh, for some reason that whole area has been like that since i was a kid and there's a reason for that it's called brookhaven okay and yeah. you can fact check me, okay? Uh, I'm gonna say somewhere in the uh, the late '80s, early '90s, uh, mm -hmm. South Haven State Park. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, <clears throat> there were, uh, I guess, uh, they collided, and they had uh, one craft go down behind Brookhaven National Lab. The other one went down be between South Haven State Park. And, uh, you know, knowing people in the fire department and uh, the Suffolk County uh, Police Department, okay, and they told me, you know, they gave me, you know, the skinny on it, and, yeah. uh, and you can fact check this, okay, but I, what I can tell you is what I saw, okay, what happened was one craft, and it chopped off the top of pine trees and like if you know anything about trees like pine is a pretty strong tree there yeah it, it chopped off pine trees for like i don't know i'm gonna if i had the estimate now and again i'm looking at this as you know a young man uh yeah, yeah. you know like 250 maybe 300 yards of pine what? trees and hit the ranger station at south haven state park now you mentioned south haven state park Yes. You're gonna, I'm, I'm going to blow your mind. Have you heard of the name John Ford? Uh, I have. Uh, I'm familiar okay. with I, that incident. I actually was they... in that area. I went there. I went with him and his group. They no longer exist. He was put in a prison. Yeah, yeah because he was allegedly trying to, you know. Yeah, I'm going to say it. But, but, face, but this way, he, uh, when we went out there, I went out there myself, my wife. I was doing a TV show called The Inter. I was on. Uh, I came from Connecticut to do a TV show on Cablevision out in Long Island, out there, because I was a broadcaster. And um, so we went out there, and uh, we saw the trees with burn marks on them. We saw that the uh, the uh, electrical wires had been redone. We saw left behind evidence of radiation suits. We saw left behind canisters. We saw a lot, lot of stuff. He was actually taken out. He had video footage, and I was at his house, and we can talk. We, we were writing notes because he thought his house was being tapped, which he probably was. Oh, definitely. But I, I have, I have a, a video footage from that thing that he gave me, and I still have it. And uh, I know what happened. And as a matter of fact, it's at the Brookhaven Laboratories. I had been in contact with the media person there when I was doing the TV show. 
And I said, are you aware of evidence of uh, some sort of technology that you shot into from Brookhaven out into the sky that shot down a mothership and shot down a number of other craft that were in the sky at the time in uh, near South Haven Park? And she said she didn't know. She might not have been given privy to that information, but mm -hmm. I know that that craft was shot down by a technology that we have that was at Brookhaven Labs. It was shot into the sky and it was actually pointed at that craft. In the park, the public park where people were coming home, I also know that there were un, there were men in uniforms that were not marked. They were like gray outfits or something, and they were t t diverting people from being able to go home on their streets away from the park area. Correct. I know this. I, I know the whole story, and I know exactly what happened because I knew him. And I've told the story before once in a while, but there was a, 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 a under, he showed a video to me, that it, I wish I had, he'd given it to me. I would have been still having it. It showed a extraterrestrial being in a white, uh, in a silver wrapped thing being carried out by a fireman. It showed another space being what looks like a space outfit of some sort, like more of a official type of space being that was uh, hurt sitting against a fence. And uh, there were all kinds of fire people there. It was crazy and they had it blocked off. I know exactly what happened. I also know that they used a, Brookhaven used a laser technology. There was a video that he had that was given to him by a defense contractor who leaked all this information to him. And the actual craft was like really like <clears throat> seamless. It was seamless. The thing was hovering and two seconds later it was pulverized by a beam, which yes. I believe came from yes. Brookhaven Laboratories. Um, what it is, uh, again, giving you the skinny here. Yeah. Um, a family friend, a uh, very smart, smart man, uh, outsourced. I'm, I'm not going to, I'm trying not to get, you know, get the page right, up. Right, right, right. That's okay. You're doing right. everything great. Right. So, um, but very smart man. The way it was told to me, it was like a Doppler radar weapon. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. And then yeah, yeah. Uh, also... Uh, over uh, Marich's Sound, are you familiar with that one? Uh, uh, Marich's Bay, rather. I know what that is, but I'm not familiar with that. What happened in Marich's Bay? They shot one down, and people in that area, and you can fact check me if you don't believe me, but uh, the people lost power, and then they shut it all down. And this was, uh, I can't remember the year now, but it was maybe yeah. '93. I'm gonna say. 93 okay and, and uh, you know you know and uh, oh, did you know do we have any idea what the craft looked like did you, did you have any information about did it look bright what was going on with that in 93 no i don't yeah. have any information okay. About that. okay interesting so you know to ask why they shut it down mm -hmm. you know we live in a society where uh we're probably you know we think about you know these people talk about uh without any knowledge, these people say, oh, well, gonna, there's going to be this ET invasion of Earth. And I say, no, you've got a hostile uh, secret government that is trying to lie to the people about the subject of UFOs. You've got a hostile government that is doing everything they can to prevent disclosure on our planet of the truth, which is something I'm not going to let happen. I am going to have the truth come out here. And uh, this show is where it's happening. So, you know, we push back on them and we say, no, you can't do this. We have no right to start uh, over the years. And they have done this. They use uh, technologies to shoot down extraterrestrial craft, regardless of where they're from. Uh, they shouldn't be shooting down anybody from another planet, no matter who they are. Agreed. What they're trying to do, okay, and uh, as human beings, uh, you know, as being a human being, I find it disgusting. Is they again lying to the public? One, two. Mm -hmm. What they're doing is they're trying to uh, weaponize this uh, technology. Yeah, they are absolutely true. I know it to be true. Yes. Uh, yeah, they are. And then in some cases, they were just given. Uh, they've just been. They were. There's a whole story behind this. A few months ago, not too long ago. Um, they used a technology given to them that was through a portal during when CERN opened the portals, those portals were closed by the space people, the asteroid man closed all those portals up. 
they got in through the portals during the eclipse. And uh, there were some of these these weapons, one of which was used in the Indian Ocean. There's actually uh, space people living in a space city in the oceans of the Indian Ocean, depth in the deep part of the ocean. And there were also mer people, which exist for people that don't know about mer people. They do exist uh, in our, our oceans and so forth. And uh, many and vegetation along that area, but the depths of the Indian Ocean were destroyed. Uh, the astrogram caught the reptilians doing this with our government, not our surface government, and that was stopped. Uh, but now they're replenishing that area. I know this for a fact. They caught the reptilians transporting um in a ship my friends are furries who's april my friend she's been on the astro ships over 100 plus times and she's a contactee and she was on the ship when they ca they caught the reptilians uh they got the weapon the uh object that was um, seen over the dc area it never it wasn't dc where it where this the debris uh ended up but that was one that was the ship that had the weapon on it the weapon was confiscated by the Ashtar Command, destroyed. The uh, reptilians wouldn't give it up, and their Ashtar Command is very peaceful, but they had no choice but to take out the ship of the reptilians, which is going to be used for negative purposes. And so that that's why nobody in the media talked about this on CNN or BBC or anything. That's why there was also, when the debris went down, we're going to have a guest on the show from North Carolina, I hope, maybe tonight, who saw unmarked black cars going to a scene where the crash happened or the debris was and uh they were cleaning up the mess as a matter of fact april my friend she talked about how there were other the uh, the ones with the, the government doing really fast too <laughs> yeah they, they they cleaned up the mess very quickly <clears throat> excuse me and uh that's how the way the secret government works um you talk was, to a, a man that is uh, 46 i've been working for the federal government <clears throat> in a couple different uh, capacities since I've been 18. And oh, wow. let me just tell you something. Uh, again, uh, as far as the Navy is concerned, and I'm sure you, you know, you're up on this. Okay. It's a hundred percent true. Yeah. All the, yeah. And, and naval you know, intelligence at the risk, at yeah. the risk of being uh, scolded, you know, I'm not going to uh, divulge, uh, you know, uh, my unit or anything like that. No, you don't need to do that. We want to keep you safe. You know, all we need to do is talk about the truth. It doesn't matter what, we don't want to get very personal about where you were in terms of units. If you, if what we're doing here, you and I is telling people truth. And that's more important than whether you were in unit B or C or whatever. We want well, to protect that. It's going to come out, brother. It's coming out. And it's yes. going to come out very soon because, um, again, uh, and I don't know what their intentions is. I haven't had any contact or anything like that. But I can just tell you, again, boots on the ground, eyes on the scene. Mm -hmm. I've seen, mm -hmm. And then uh, I've just seen the activity ramp up. And knowing how air, aircraft works, okay, mm -hmm. um, you know, being a crew chief on a Nighthawk, okay, mm -hmm. um, I know the way aircraft works, and there's no way you could tell me, okay, and if it's a foreign nation, then America, we're in a lot of trouble. But I don't see yeah. that. I don't see, I, I don't see that. Well, let I, me ask you a question, Benjamin. I got to ask you a question. You're a very right. interesting person. I'm enjoying the interview a lot. Um, so now I can. I've I have had people that had top security clearance on here. I had a young lady who's a friend of the show. Uh, for she, she was like she was fed up with what she was seeing in her department. And she was elevated to even higher top security clearance. So I have no problem when people say they have top security clearance or not. I believe you do. You don't have to say it. But let me ask you a question. Are the people on the inner part of this, and, and again, this is, a, this is a very specific question without getting crazy about it. Uh, I've been saying for months that the Pentagon is having problems. They're going crazy right now. They know that there's going to be contact, which is going to be in 2026. The increased activity now in the last few weeks of spaceships all over the world being seen by people and in the heightened amount of craft that will be seen in the next two weeks. Uh, and the thing at Langley Air Force Base, I have a video of a, one of the Ashtar ships off the coast of the Chesapeake Bay. The ships are starting to show themselves to get people comfortable with the fact that not only have we been lied to, but we are here from other planets to help your planet. 
Uh, do you think or do you know people in the Pentagon without going very specific in general? Would you say that they're going a little bit, they're afraid, the Pentagon? I think that, uh, you know, they are trying to suppress it as long as possible because, uh, you know, and again, I don't care your skin color or who you got, right. or, you know what I'm saying? They, they, they're afraid that, you know, it's going to go sideways and, you know, create, you know, some people are not going to be able to handle um, that, you know, we are not the only, uh, you know, people in this uh, galaxy, I guess. I right. right. That's right. We aren't. <laughs> but we've been taught <clears throat> when I was a kid, we were taught to believe Well, we were taught to believe that this was it. You know, this is it. When you Agreed. die, this is it. All that stuff was all based on lying to the public since we were kids in the 60s and every generation well, has been lied to. Before that, in the 50s, what about all everything that oh, was yeah, the, the White House? <laughs> oh, yeah, the 50s, 1952. Yep, yeah, 1952, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we lied I mean, to it the whole time. And that Crazy. was, you know, and that was after Roswell. Mm -hmm. so. And you know what's funny about Roswell, Ben, uh, is that they told the truth the initial first couple hours when it was in the paper. Flying saucer crashed. That was the truth. Then they changed the truth. The Air Force told them, you got to change it. So then it became a weather balloon. Now, I understand if you look under the different decades of the Air Force, uh, they changed it from a weather balloon to crash test dummies. If you look at the, bo the book that they published a number of years ago of what happened at Roswell, the story changed every couple of, you know, every number of years. And there were like four different stories. Called, uh, min 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 uh, excuse me. I have uh, been up uh, many hours. Uh, it's called uh, manipulation there. Yeah, absolutely. And, that, you know, now there are people that are asleep that would say, they'll read the reports. Oh, it's, it was a crash test dummies that were in the sky. Now, if you think it's crash test dummies that were in the sky, I'll sell you. I'll sell you an island off the coast of Hawaii for five dollars. <laughs> I will. I'll, I'll just do that right now. And you and so uh, you know the thing is we've been so lied to and so programmed. Sometimes we've been so programmed that we believe the program that we're lied about to. But the, the fact suppressed. of the matter is, yeah, and suppressed. So I mean, this show went viral when I came on here to TikTok in 2023. And I've been busting the matrix here, telling people the truth. I've interviewed all kinds of people, some people in government, people who have connections with NASA that are fed up with, with the lies and they're coming forth and they're telling the truth. So I totally believe what we're doing here is more disclosure than what you're going to see November 13th in Washington. Oh, 100% agree with this, David. Yeah, absolutely. It's just, uh, uh, you know, I think that, uh, you know, if the government was smarter, which if you've ever worked for the government, you know how it works. And again, I don't want to get the page. Uh, no, we, no, we're all right. This, yeah, we'll be careful. But yeah, no, I, you understand? The I do I'm understand. I do understand. Like, no, you're, um, you're doing I right. think that they should have did it a different way. Like, mm -hmm. you know, they should have eased people into the process of the inevitable. And I'll leave it at that with that. Very good. Well, I want to thank you for coming up here, man. Thank uh, you, you brother. Know, much love and you know, prayers, and, you and yours. Yeah, and if you have anything you want to share out that way of sightings or inside information without saying what department, uh, you can always come up here. I've had uh, people that had top security clearance on here before. I'm not, you know, they're not afraid to speak, and uh, we've always been fine with it. So if you do ever get new information, um, you know, a matter of fact, let me ask you one more question. Yes. Are you familiar with what would happen last Sunday uh, over? Uh, Langley Air Force Base. I am not. Okay. Well, it was there was a uh, a space. Well, evidently last year, these there was a mothership and a bunch of drone. They call them drones or unmanned craft yeah, from the, the mothership. Yeah, they were over Langley Air Force Base. I'm still trying to ask my my telepathic communications to find out exactly what I didn't even know about that, which is kind of weird. I usually know about everything, but they were. And it's, the Air Force called, did. it's called recon. Okay, what recon. they're doing is they are trying to assess our threat to destroying this country. Which, uh, and I hope America, are you listening? Okay, well, destroying this planet, actually. You know, our yes. whole planet. Uh, yes, yes, sir. Um, 
and uh, you know having you know again boots on the ground eyes on the scene and working brain logistically like they are assessing the threat to each other and uh, when Russia when when a country starts with an R and right. is handing out nukes to other countries okay like North right starts with a C you understand and uh, and another country that starts with a C and another country that starts with an I okay they're, they're concerned because they know like you know what I mean like all this yes. is gonna be gone because yes. you know what I mean and, and I don't care what country you, you're from but like what are we doing over here you know what right. I'm saying? like because everybody's gonna be pushing a button and right. you'll see them flying over your head and then everything's gonna be disappearing around you and, and the, uh, well the good news is I can tell because I, I am with the Ash Trucker man which is a real thing that they uh, will shut down every missile silo every electronic device that is weapon uh, author uh, a weapon created they can the Astro command can shut down all of that in like a nanosecond agreed they have been able to do it since uh i forgot the the year of the incident but the one uh, that... hiroshima hiroshima nagasaki is when the space people came they've been here before yeah, but they came because the we were, when they when they did the nuclear the hydrogen bomb the energy from that reverberated beyond earth into outside the universe it affected other planets but our scientists don't know that, or they didn't know it then, but uh, they created a, something that was affecting life on other planets. The, the reverberation of that hydrogen bomb went not just around our planet, but beyond our planet. You see? Yes. Um, and not only that, they're just very concerned, uh, you know, based, you know, that's the only thing logically and logistically that makes sense. I yeah. agree with your statement 100%. Um, they're just very concerned, uh, because, uh, you know, it's like a slow motion car crash. You understand what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. All right, Benjamin. I want to thank you, man, from Long Island right, for coming brother. up here. Nice talking to you. Yeah. And I'll, I'll be on tonight at 11. Well, brother. I'll yeah, follow yeah, you. Watch our show is on 11 following you now. And our Saturday night show, you're going to love everybody. My friend, April friends with Prairie's 11, 11. She is uh, a commander, um, with the Ashtar command. She is in Vermont. She's been on the Ashtar ships for over a hundred plus times. She's like a, a sister and we work together and, uh, and she'll be on with us Saturday night. So you want to hook up Saturday night, everything about the Ashtar command about contact will be happening. I talk about it here on my regular show. Uh, I want to thank Benjamin again for being a guest on encounters. Thanks Benjamin. Thank you. Have a good day. You, you know what? You are going to have an amazing day today. I can feel it. I feel great. <laughs> love, brother. You too. You have an amazing day also, brother. Let's see here. And uh, oh, that was great. Benjamin was a good interview. We enjoyed that. You're watching Encounters. We're trying to do a morning show here once in a while. My big shows at night. Last night we had up to 500 people, which is normal for us uh, on, uh, in the evening. And if you'd like to be on the show and share your story, uh, like I said, there's a lot of things I know. I've been involved in this subject for years. I know a lot of things. I'm not like a newbie coming on here doing TikTok saying, oh, let's do a UFO show. It's a big, it's a big subject. It's not me. I have, I have a lot of background. Plus, I'm, I'm uh, also uh, from off planet. I come from Mars originally, uh, which is a planet of 10 to 15 million inhabitants. Contrary to what you hear from scientists and NASA and everybody about Mars, Mars is a livable, breathable planet. And there are people living on that planet right now. In terms of the Ashtar Command, I, uh, I'm involved in intergalactic communications. When I Before I came here, I did all the intergalactic communications between all the ships of the command all over the universe. And probably that's why I love media so much. I use the media here, uh, which I love. I'm a starseed, and I had my first ET contact last year at 18 years old. At 18 years old. So last year you're 18. So this year you're 19. Holloway for life. Uh, Holloway for life. Did you have a physical contact? Did you have a physical contact? Uh, let's see. Holloway for life. 
You said you had contact. I'm kind of curious. Physical, she was a searing. Interesting. I'm going to bring you up because you're over 18. I want you to come up and tell your story. Holloway for life. Please accept my request. This is going to be nice. She actually had a physical experience with a Syrian being. This is interesting. Uh, <laughs> hey, Holloway for life. How are you? Good. Good, good. And what's your first name? Padre. Did you say Padre? Padre. Padre. Okay. Yeah. So you're over 18 now. You're 19? Yeah, I'm 19. Okay, good. I want to make sure it's legal so I have any problems. So this is interesting. <laughs> You're a young adult. You uh, had this encounter. How did this whole thing happen with the Syrian being? Can you tell us? I mean, were you always interested in the subject? What happened here? So basically, one day I was just coming home from college with my mom. Then we came home, and we were just, you know, we were just chilling and all that. Then I was just playing one of my songs I made. It's a high frequency song. I was just playing it. I was just enjoying it. Then my mom was in the kitchen. Then the bean just, then she just popped up behind me. I, I mean, I was stumped around when she popped up, like, but she just, like, teleported right there. It was crazy. Really? So before that happened, and we're going to continue with your story, because this is, make sure you talk into the phone a little bit more. Turn your volume up on yeah. your phone, actually. Turn the okay. volume up on your phone. That's going to okay, turn your voice. That's much better. So she popped up behind you. Before that ever happened, did you have like this interest part in part of your young life regarding life elsewhere in the universe? Yes. Um, something told me so when uh what, what's that man name? Um when that man uh went up to Congress and told about the UFO, that's when something in my head told me yes. Yes, like something in my head just told me yes, and I just started looking up the information then i just found out i'm a star seed from a channeler like one of my friends uh somebody i know he channels and he found out i was a star seed and i had a whole session with him uh this year hmm. so when you had that session did he talk about the syrians yes he talked about the syrians he talked about the acetoids he talked about um so our latest conversation from last week, he said, um, he, he said that portal I have right there by my door, he said those beings that I be seeing that night is the Palladian and Inner Earth because I'm connected to Inner Earth and Inner mm. Earth is allowing me to come down sometime in the astral. But I mean, I don't see like my dreams like that, but I know it's there. I know it's there. So tell us about the Syrian woman. This is a woman, correct? Yes. And how tall was she? Do you know? She was like the same height as me, but I would say like two more inches. I mm -hmm. felt, I, yeah. <laughs> Can you explain what she looked like? She was physically, she physically just came in. You have, you have like a galactic portal in your room or house. So I have one by my, uh, so I have one by my front door that what he told by front me. Door. Yeah. That's what he told hmm. me, and I be seeing these. Uh, so I see bright light. When I see the bright light, that just um, he said that's the Palladians. Then we, then he said when I see the golden light pop up, that's inner earth. Inner earth. So have yeah. you? Uh, I want to get. I want. There's so many questions I have here. You're watching encounters, everybody. Welcome to the show. I'm Commander Ali, on your host. And uh, so when she appeared um when you turned around can you tell us what she looked like so basically she was it was blue but then when i think that she it was like her eyes was so beautiful blue eyes body type humanoid then when i uh when my body was moving closer it got uh she got brighter like her frequency got so bright I couldn't, mm -hmm. I, like, I jerked away, like, I pulled back because it got so bright. And, like, her I was energy, just, her, yeah. her energy was really, really strong. Mm hmm Yeah. 
they should come so the syrians come from that christ consciousness which is a very high vibrational frequency yeah. everybody um so that now so like if uh, you know uh did you try to give her a hug or say you know thank you for being here or you're not able to do that i wasn't able to do that i would just like i, I couldn't blink my eyes were just I was just stuck there, but then my body was just making me move closer, like it was familiar. Then mm -hmm. when um, then when my boy that channels, he told me that was family. Yeah, yeah. Now you also, when you see the golden light, you're able to go. Evidently, that when the golden light, where's the golden light portal in your house? Where's that? It's the same. It's the same spot where uh, the rest of the bees show up. He said, mm -hmm. um, mostly it's my ET family that be showing up. Then when other bees show up, I get like um, these little vivid images on how the bees look like. One time I see the man that had like a whole, um, say like a Star Wars like battle suit on. Yeah, like yeah. That. Then, yeah. Then I see the woman humanoid white hair i'm like okay i'm i was like i'm tripping for a second then these, i had so to, these, <laughs> these these space people these are actual space people everybody that are coming through a portal they're you're not dreaming this they're physically in your room yeah so you're having physical contact with star people that's amazing now let me ask you a question when the golden uh portal opens up have you been able to, to go into the inner earth no it's just like when I turn my head, it's right there for a couple seconds. Then, say mm -hmm. if somebody try to come downstairs or something, say if like my mom or my sibling, yeah, 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 it would just disappear. But the dog, like my two little puppies, they be yeah. barking at it. They be barking at it at night. Oh yeah, that tells you that yeah. tells you something. So if that golden light, if that portal opens up again, and no one's comes in to where that is, and they're upstairs or wherever they're up, so. If that portal opens, do you think you're being invited, which I'm getting that you're being, if you go through that portal, and I'm not telling you what to do here, believe me, I don't want to be, you know, don't want to say anything like that, but, you know, but if the golden portal opens up, it's opening up for a reason. It's opening up either for people from the inner earth to come to see you, or you're being an invitation to go and see them. And I'm pretty sure you'd be able to go back to where you were through the portal back like a Stargate. You'd probably be yeah. able to come right back into your room. Do you feel that that would be the case? Something um, I don't know because sometimes when the portal closes, like I go over there and try to like just feel it, like try to see if I could just go inside. Like I'd be like, yeah, you're you're trying to do that. You're trying to so you've tried to go through the portal into the inner earth, correct? Yes, I'd be trying. You're trying. Yes. And what happens when that happens? nothing happens i feel like um first i feel like first it's um it's like actual then then when it becomes physical then i would be able to do that yeah yeah do you think that they are are the people on the inner earth that are opening that portal up to your room actually are, are trying to do you think that you will eventually be able to go through that portal one of one of these days i don't know i might have to have an uh another session another yeah. session to see what i could do yeah so it seems like your friend is pretty in tune for some reason he they they've they've actually been pretty a uh, mystical pnw we're gonna mystical pnw we're gonna follow you and you'll be our next guest but um so with the uh syrian woman you've seen her now you also said you had you had visitation by a palladian woman correct yes and and when did that happen that happened last month it was just last month just a, yeah it was just a vivid image it, so mm. this what happened so this what happened i was just um chilling i was just hanging out at night in my uh downstairs in the living room then i just looked over so fast i see a i see the heel i see mm -hmm. like i see the heel like somebody walking i, I see something that i got a vivid image i see the woman mm -hmm. beautiful when i say beautiful beautiful white hair beautiful yellow eyes it's yeah it's crazy <laughs> yeah no i i believe that to be true um so 
That's interesting. So you met the Syrian woman who was like a very, really powerful, loving energy. You met the Palladian that had a, a kind of a visual on, on the Palladian. You met another space person, a man who was wearing a space outfit or something. Well, they yeah. all probably were in some regards. So that's very interesting. You've had, so you want, you know, you're one of the few people I've had some others over the, since last year that have had physical contact with space people and not in the dream state. So you're one of those people that's having physical contact. Um, I'm pretty sure you're, you know, so you can be going to sleep or doing stuff and hanging out in the house. And all of a sudden the portal opens up and a space person comes in. Is <laughs> so, that correct? Um, uh, not when I, not when I sleep though, but when I, no, when you're awake, uh, I mean, yeah. Um, when I'm laying down, the um, when I'm laying down, the light don't come from the portal. It comes from the middle of the hallway right here. So like it just middle, oh, it opens up in the middle yeah. of your hallway in the house. Okay. Yeah, yeah. When uh, I lay down, but when I stand up, it goes. I it will still do that sometime, but I feel like it's two different like portals. Like somebody using a different one to come through here, while it's the other one right there. I'm like, wow. Yeah, I didn't want too much. <laughs> well, I appreciate that, man. You know, you're a, a beautiful guest. Uh, you know, Thank you have a beautiful story to be told. And it, uh, my sh I do a radio on WESU NPR radio for 21 years. I'm a contactee uh, since the 60s. So I'm very much, okay. I know a lot about everything on the spiritual UFO front. And uh, I appreciate you sharing your stories. That They were great. Yeah, thank you. Uh, well, let me tell you one more thing. Um, yeah, go ahead. So, Absolutely. So I asked him, so I asked my boy, I was like, will I be a Galactic Federation agent when they come in 2026, 2027? Will I be able to have physical, like, you know, join the GF? I was, he said, yeah. Then he told me, then he, then I told him that um, I seen like a vivid image of me and him, like on the spaceship looking at Earth with our uniforms on and he said yeah we you got some second mission to do in the future yeah so here's the deal so it's interesting you say that so i'm with the Ashtar command which oversees what you're talking about there yeah. really are no different federations there's one big thing that mm -hmm. people need to know there's no like separate federations or galactic this or that the Ashtar command represents the palladians the syrians all those space people work within the Ashtar command which is the christ of beings of light so when you do have that experience 2026 is going to be the year of contact uh what you'll be doing is you'll be you you definitely will be wearing a space suit to go into the ship when you do go into the ship when that happens for you you'll be actually wearing a space suit because of the atmosphere of the air is different than what we breathe on earth so you're going to find that to be somewhat different when you go on the spaceship but you will have that experience oh Thank you. Thank yeah, no, you'll, you'll definitely have it. You're already, too, you're already connected on a physical level with the space people coming to you in your mm -hmm. hallway. I mean, you're definitely ha you're already having the experience of contact. You're going to have the experience that's going to be beautiful in 2026 for you of actually going on a spaceship. Yeah. And what yeah. else? Yesterday, yesterday morning, I seen, mm -hmm. uh, yesterday morning, like early morning before everybody woke up, I went outside uh, so the dogs can use it. Um, I looked up, I see something. I see like something just hovering over there. I was like, okay, it's nothing. Then when I looked yeah. up again, that thing moved, that thing just moved so fast. I was like, oh yeah, that's not a plane. The show, yeah. a, plane, a plane came after that. I'm like, oh no. Yeah. I'm like, oh yes. I was like, oh yes, but like, oh no, because I didn't know what it was. But I knew it was a, I knew it was a UFO because it didn't have no blinking light. It would just, yeah. it would just move. It, it would just move. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, my friend, uh, I'll, and if you ever, if you are visited again, and you are, which you will be, I'm sure, you know, you're always welcome to join us. Uh, I'm, all, I'm mostly on at night at 11 o'clock. That's my big show. We have usually anywhere from 250 to 400, 500 people on that show. Uh, so you're always welcome to join us. And I want to thank you for sharing a really beautiful story. Thank you. Thank you. You're all right. Welcome. All right, my friend, I'm going to bring it down here and uh, let's do this. And, uh, you know, amazing. He's a contactee. He's over 19. He's in college. 
and he's having contact with Syrians, Palladians, and essentially star people. He's physically having, he's physically having connections. Yeah, he's, he's like 20, I think he's 19 or 20. He lives, you know, he, he has a galactic portal that opens up in his hallway in his house. Get this. He met the, he met the Syrian woman who was beautiful. And he said, she was, he, he turned around. She was, and she's right there. He's then you're 19. And she was right there in the hallway, looking at him physically came through a portal in his house. You know, that's a beautiful story. I really think that's very beautiful. Uh, and I know he will have, when 2026 happens, uh, that he already has the contact with his space people uh, off planet. And I, I think they will help him. They will help him when contact happens. The Syrian woman, I think the Syrian woman I'm getting is going to help him. So very beautiful, very beautiful. And good morning, April. April, if you're there, I saw April's, the TikTok showed April's face, so I'm thinking April's here. Good morning, April. I hope you got to rest a little bit last night. And if you'd like to join us on the show, uh, you may do so. Saturday night is Ashtar Command night. Everything and anything Ashtar Command will be happening Saturday evening at 11. I want to send my love out to everybody uh, in the audience around the world. Thank you for being here. Why some people versus others? Um, let me bring you up here on that one. So, Arena, I'm going to bring you up, Arena, to ask you a question. Uh, Arena, if you'd like to come up with a commander, you are welcome to. You know, we try to be unconditional here. Oh, hi. Um, is it, hi, how are you? Is it Arena? Yeah, it's Irina. Oh, nice to meet you, Irina. Welcome to uh, Encounters. We're usually on at night at 11 with our big show. I'm doing a morning show this morning. So tell us, uh, you were asking uh, why some people versus others. Can you expand on that question? Yeah, thank you. I'm just dipping in. I'm just trying to understand. Um, what is this about the connection that, you know, some people um, are able to have contact? Like, what is it about those people? Is it some sort of energy connection is it something like about their internal energy or is it more of like a random um thing no uh i think what happens is they are contacted by what i call their space family so as he was talking he's 19 years old he has a connection with the uh, you know he could have mo more than one connection beyond earth but he's connected obviously with the syrians he has connections with the palladians so he has off-planet connections he probably has um you know, like a, a biological cosmic family on one of those uh, planetary systems uh so they contacted him uh and he also has obviously uh he'll learn that he has probably a mission to do that he doesn't really totally know what that is yet as a, a young person um but they do contact you everybody has a star family including yourself but it'll happen when it happens it's like one of those things that'll just oh it just happened to you and you say oh well, what's going on here because you're now waking up to a different frequency of vibration, you, through meditation, could um, train yourself to learn how to make contact with your star family. It takes time, but you can do it. Okay. And how does that, I mean, so where do we actually come from then? Is I, I guess I'm just trying to understand how we have star families. Okay. Well, on Earth, we've been taught that we don't have any families except the ones that we have, cousins and relatives on Earth brothers and sisters, right? That We've all been through it. I've been through it in the 60s when I was a kid. We've yeah. all been through that. That's indoctrination to believe this is just the way it is. So I bust the matrix. So how do we how do we get to learn about our star families? A lot of it has to do with, uh, a lot of it for me <coughs> over the years, I, I was lucky that I did see a spaceship with space people in it when I was a kid in the cul-de-sac where I lived in Long Island when I was there for a brief number of years. Um, but for other people who have never had that experience, uh, I do believe that meditation is the key thing. So when you, if you meditate, I don't know if you do. I always tell people, because I use music on my radio show, that's high frequency vibrationally. So you want to turn your brain off when you're doing this. And you want to go into a deep meditation for about 30 minutes a day or in the evening. And it could be at the beach, wherever it is that you feel comfortable, away from people. And as you go into your higher self, we all have a higher self. Uh, you can ask yourself, I wish to connect with my true cosmic star family. And eventually, as you keep asking for that, uh, it'll be telepathically communicated. So one night or day when you're sitting on that beach, you might get a message from 
uh, command, you know, space person um, from the planet, whatever. Uh, we hear you. You're part of our space family. We're communicating with you telepathically because the space people tel use telepathy for communications. They can verbally speak, but it is tele it's um, it's the telepathy. Are you familiar with telepathy? Yes. So that's the way they communicate. It's telepathic. They prefer telepathy because it's very clear. There's no blockage. When we talk, we think. When we use telepathy, it's just conscious to conscious communications, as you no, that's how you're going to communicate down the road when you learn how to do this. You can ask for your cosmic Christed star family, and you want to know who they are. They're out there. Uh, everybody has one. You just have to take time to make that connection. So how do we, I guess, the origination of it? So are we just like recycled spirit energy? Like what are we, no. how are we all related then? No, well, we're not recycled at all. We're actually our star seed, meaning that originally our origin was from another planet with a cosmic family from another planet. Whatever that planet is, I don't know. So to answer that question, we're not recycled. We're not recycled spirits at all. We're actually, matter of fact, if you were to know, uh, though there's a word called stasis. Mm -hmm. And one of the things my friend April's talked about, uh, which is we have bodies that are in another ship that protects our bodies in what we call stasis. Our bodies are we're a lot taller than we are in the human form. We're human, but we are spiritually very much advanced. Uh, and if we go back into our bodies that are protected in stasis on the ship, we would wake up and, but we're not, we're not recycled. We actually all came here unconscious or conscious for a purpose. And uh, many people are still learning what that is. So it's a wave of things. There's waves of people that are waking up their waves of people that have been waking up for 10 20 years so it's always in like if you go to a beach you see the waves how they go up in little increments and then there's this big wave that comes so mm -hmm. that big wave is a bunch of people hypothetically the, the, the wave is a bunch of humanity waking up for the first time uh so we are waves it comes in waves we're all waking up to the thing so i'm so glad you're here because my teachings are to teach you the truth about what's happening i don't channel anything I don't have like, crystal balls. I don't have, you know, pendulums or any of that stuff. Uh, I, because I don't come from this earth. I can tell you, as a star person, about your in terms of your question. I have no problem answering them. Thank you. Well, it's interesting. I mean, I guess I'm drawn to it with the questions because I've had a lot of experiences in my life with energy and like, you know, having a dream, waking up, and it comes true instantly things like yeah. that and like seeing people's numbers. So one time I got very sick and my mom took me to the hospital and. Um, all of a sudden, nurses were coming in. I would just see numbers and electricity like pop in front of my face. And I tell them like, oh, this is your number. And like people would freak out. They're like, oh, that's my lucky number. Or like, oh, yes, you know, I, I don't know. There were people coming in like treating me like a sideshow almost. It was interesting. But... Yeah. No, it's good to ask questions. I mean, matter of fact, you're asking on this show the right show and the right person the questions because I'm not just some person randomly talking about UFOs. I actually am from another planet. And I'm also an Astro Command person. And uh, I came out of the closet probably 21 years ago. I didn't care. I mean, I just, I don't care anymore. I just basically tell people, people need to come out of the closet. If you know you're a Palladian, if you know you're and from the Andromeda star system, wherever you are, don't be afraid to be who you are. It's time for people to have courage and don't care what anybody thinks. Just be who you are. That's really the most important thing. Is it possible that, we're not all star seeds. Like I feel very connected to the earth, you know, very like trees. Well, you can, oh yeah, but that doesn't mean you're not a star seed. You're connected to the planet in a beautiful way. So am I, but you also are a star seed. So you love this planet and you are connected to it, but you also came here on a mission to earth and your mission to earth in just in those few senses, you want to protect this planet, right? You yeah. love this planet. Oh yeah. So yeah, you're a star seed. It's a lot Absolutely. to take in. <laughs> it's a lot to yeah, take in. And you know what? You don't have to. You don't have to understand it in one day. Uh, take your time with it. Take a, do some meditation. Take it in deep breath. Breathe out and just listen to higher space music. I use Christ uh, conscious ambient space music. Mm -hmm. If you listen to that type of music and sit down and turn up your brain, you'll start to understand it. With the music, will help you get relaxed and you'll be able to absorb the information. Okay. All right. Well, thank you. Oh, thank you. And we're on at 11 o'clock normally, so you can always join us on our regular show. And we appreciate you and your questions. Thank you so much. All right. Well, thank you, Irina. Take care. We'll put her down here. Let's do this.
and see, and I'm all about helping people on such an unconditional loving scale on my show. If you don't understand something, you know, sentences are great, but sometimes you got to bring people up to understand really more than a sentence. Been seeing ships for 35 years and, and Venusian starseed. Oh, okay. Let me bring that person up here. And that person has a lot of, um, uh, I think it's Branwyn. Branwyn, can you change your setting uh, to public? I can't bring you up. Change your setting to public. You might have to come back out. Change the setting, come back in. Switch it to public on your thing there, and I'll be happy to uh, <coughs> bring you up. <coughs> Excuse me. I'll be happy to uh, to bring you up here. Jupiter spawn. She could have once for many hundreds of years as a tree of the wind or grass or so on. Many encounters for me. Uh, Kristen Michael. Kristen Michael. Can you tell us about, let's see here. Oh, good. Here we go. Branwyn. I want to bring Branwyn up. And if you turn your camera on, Branwyn, that'd be great. Uh, the only time people don't can't put their cameras on is if they don't have enough followers. So we're gonna see if she can turn her camera on this morning for us. Good morning. How are you? Hi, Commander. Um, I'm I'm well, but sick, and I'd prefer not to turn oh, my camera sick? on if you don't no, mind. No, I'm a mess. No, no get, I hope you feel better. So tell us about. Oh no, that's us, okay. Yeah, tell us your story. Tell us about what happened with you and how you became awoken uh, to who you are and what happened with encounters. Um, so I have been fascinated m my entire life, starting when I was young, eight, nine, uh, with Egypt and, um, everything from that area. And, uh, the first time I saw a ship, I was 19 going on 20 and, uh, driving home with a friend and, um, saw a massive disc shaped ship descending into an orchard where we both worked. My girlfriend and I wow. worked in that orchard mm -hmm. and um, it was amazing. It was at night and it was lit up and, and turning slowly and just had to pull over and sit there. It was a, um, about, three quarters of a mile from us. So I couldn't see like a lot of detail, but it was just descending so slight. It was amazing. Like I'm shaking now, but the, it wasn't frightening. It was peaceful. And, yeah. um, from yeah. there it was just, I needed to know more. And yeah. that's when I really started delving into, uh, meditation and getting in contact with my guides and, through my guides is where I really started to learn who I was and why I had the fascination with Egypt and the history there. Mm. Um, so that was in Pennsylvania and I continue to see ships in Pennsylvania. Um, I've now moved to Ohio and um, I live in a fairly rural area um, surrounded by woods and um, nightly I am seeing three ships that are mm -hmm. boomerang shaped, if that makes sense. Boomerang shaped. That makes sense okay. to you, like a V. Yeah. Like a oh, yeah, V. Yeah, I know what those are. With yeah. a deep cut in the middle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That have a rotating light pattern. Um, and uh, the first time I saw them, um, they came and they went rather quickly. But then I was going out nightly and just sitting. Um, if my daughter is with me, they don't tend to stay because she's really um, a high energy. She's very nervous. She's a believer, but she's hesitant at this point. She's 19. Yeah. Um, oh, 19, okay. Yeah, she's 19, like the same age I was when I first started with my experiences. Wow. But wow. now when I go out, they just show up and they stay. They hover. They just hover there over me and, what do you, and how do you how do you feel about the energy when i have interviews with people that are seeing these things on a on a continuous basis like that huh? um you know you can like you you are consciously awake so for you when you're seeing these boomerang uh ships how do you do uh -huh. you feel they're positive or negative beings I that feel, are operating these? 
I feel they're I feel very positive. Okay. Um, I feel well, and even now I'm like emotional. Like I feel very positive. I feel that uh, they're here watching over not just me, but maybe staying with me because um, I'm not a threat and I am a believer, right. um, and I want to be part of of this awakening and helping everyone and welcoming them. Um, but I do. I get emotional. I get excited. It's good energy that I feel. Yeah, well, absolutely. I always want to know that. So that's good. So we can't, right. you know, be, you know, not every boomerang ship is a negative ET ship. Uh, you know, I think uh, so. You felt that energy being positive. So have you had uh, in your experiences, because you are having these things, have you been visited physically? I have not been visited physically. I've had... I lucid dream, um, mm -hmm. so I don't know if you consider that. I don't consider that physically. Um, it's in right. my dreams. Um, a lot of times, I'll set an intention to go travel and to meet um, or to be shown things, but not here on this plane. I call that the cosmic dream. So, if you have a regular dream, it's a dream where you know, like marshmallows are floating around, and there's some M and M's. Uh, little things floating with it that's just like a regular kind of regular whatever. dream right right so i i've actually over time have separated the regular dream with what i call cosmic dreams so when you go out of your out of your body into this mm -hmm. cosmic dream can you tell us uh, do you see space people in the dream i hear them if that makes any sense i no, hear them I hear them, and um, at this point in my life, I now have a light language. Uh, so, and you know, when people hear someone speak light language, I don't know how seriously they take us, but mm -hmm. there are some people that I hear that it means absolutely nothing to me, no emotion, mm -hmm. no sense, and, and then there are other people I hear that takes me, like it hits me at the core. I understand emotionally. Yeah. Um, and so in my dreams, I'm able to speak to them like that. And I can't tell you what anyone is saying to me other than the feeling yeah. that I'm getting from that and that yeah. it is peaceful and it is helpful and, yeah. um, it's, you know, shining bright light and love and that's what they want for us. They, they, so you're you're learning uh, off planet light language from uh, space uh -huh. people, so or at least a certain yeah. group of space people. So mm -hmm. I think you'll eventually have, like you know, for example, we are going. We talk about it on our show here pretty regularly, and then on Saturday nights we have Astro Command Night. I love. I'm here a lot. Uh, <laughs> you're here a lot, so you know yeah. you are here a lot. I think I've seen you. So mm -hmm. you know that the, you know about the contact, and you know about April yes. and myself and the group of five. So you're very aware. Right. So good. So yeah, when when that I think you're gonna definitely when contact happens, you're gonna meet some of those beings that you're. That'd that be you're, so exciting. Yeah, yeah, I think you're gonna see them. Now I do have a question for you because something has been happening in the past month that I have <laughs> either never been aware of or has just started happening. I'm not sure which one it is. This is happening during the day. Mm -hmm. I am hearing very low, deep level vibrations and feeling them. My daughter can hear and feel them as well. Nobody else can. And it seems like they'll click on and will feel and hear the vibrations for maybe half an hour. And then it clicks out and then it will come back in another hour or so. And it cycles all through the day. Interesting. And how yeah, do you feel about that? And I'm wondering because I don't know because I'm not scared of it in the least. Mm -hmm. I'm just wondering if because I am here in this rural setting with the woods, if maybe I don't know if yeah. they're using this area as a landing point. I don't know. It, well, it's just interesting. I'm getting information. So you see the boomerang ships almost every night now. Yes, mm -hmm. I go out. And they then, pop up. Mm -hmm. And you're hearing, and you're hearing a sound. Uh, your mm -hmm. daughter and yourself are hearing this sound, mm -hmm. like a vibrational frequency sound. Yes, very low, okay. very, very. Uh -huh. I'm, I'm going to get some information for you, and I, I'm getting information sure. for you right now as we're speaking. This is some of the things I do, people. I can read energy. 
I can read people when they hear the story. I tune into them. Give me mm -hmm. a moment. Sure, please. As long as you need. The spaceships you're seeing, there's going to be, you're living in a rural area. Let me get some information. Mm -hmm. They already have a area, not too far up in uh, where you are in the rural area. Mm -hmm. uh, that's kind of hidden. Um, I think they have like a space base up there. Mm -hmm. That's why you're seeing them. That's, uh, well, that, that's what I was wondering. There's a space base there. Yes, they mm -hmm. have a space base somewhere in the in the rural area there. I don't know where it is, mm -hmm. but they have. But they they are advanced enough where it is hidden. Nobody's going to be able to find it. Good. <laughs> Until it's time, when <laughs> you could. Yeah. I want them to yeah, be no safe. one's going to be able to find it. And uh, to tell you about the beings on the ship, I'll give you some information that I'm getting. Pardon. Give me a minute. Pardon the noise. It's my cat. Yeah, you know, when I close my eyes, that's because that's the way I tune in and visually see things. I understand. Some of them, uh, they wear spacesuits. Uh, I saw one with a robe on of some sort. He uh, mm -hmm. uh, he looked uh, like a, more of a, a spiritual elder of the group. Um, mm, yeah, they have a hidden base in the woods there somewhere. Okay. There's a base there. You're going yeah, to be contacted. You will be physically contacted. They're, they're basically, um, they're basically have been trying to figure you out a little bit more um, <laughs> before they make the contact. They're trying to understand you and your daughter. And there is, for this to occur, your daughter will need to be calm. There's nothing that is right. a threat to her. So right. if there's a way to get her to listen, to calm mm -hmm. herself down, she'll be fine. Okay. Right. She um, definitely is. Um, yeah, she's... Um, what people would call bipolar. So she's just a little bit, she snaps oh, in bipolar, and yeah. back and forth. Yeah. yeah. Um, and maybe they're trying to understand me because I've, aside from seeing them, I've had a lot of other experiences. I've actually flatlined twice and crossed. Um, so I feel like I live on several different planes. Yeah, I can so, understand that. Yeah. What you're saying, yes. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, Branwyn, it's been a pleasure hearing your story. Thank and, you so very uh, much. I, I appreciate everything that you shared with me and and hearing my story, story and um, helping me out with um, mm. what I was thinking. I appreciate yes, you. You're, well, you're a beautiful soul, and I appreciate you Thank too. Thank you, sir. And uh, we always we you know we always operate in the frequency of love. That's Absolutely. the only frequency I know, and that's the way I, I hope to be treated as well. So, Absolutely. Uh, I, I feel so. I feel it so much that I, I'm. I feel like I'm crying. So I appreciate it. Thank you, sir. You're, you're welcome. Good, you're very beautiful welcome. Beautiful day. Thank you. you. I'll be back. You too. All Thank right. You. Let me do this here. Um. And I let's see here. Uh, let's see. And uh, they're watching encounters. I've got the day off, so I'm. I'm not going to be on here all day. But I am. I've only been on here. UFO mania. In Japan, hello, 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 Japan. Hello to Japan. My friends in Japan, UFO Mania, blessings to you. And uh, blessings to everybody, you know. Blessings to everybody. So if you're just coming in here, my name is Commander Alian. I'm with the Ashtar Command. I'm a talk show host on WESUFM.org, NPR Pacific Radio for 21 years. I came out of the closet over 21 years ago, and I didn't care. Uh, and I am from Mars originally. I'm also a telepathic communicator with my uh, space father uh, on the ship. And uh, I'm here to bust the matrix. Oh, okay, good to see you in Quebec. Friends uh, with Furious, good, good morning. Let me see if I can bring her up. You know, uh, I always bring my sister up when I can because I'm on in the morning. I had coffee this morning. I had the coffee, and I'm drinking. I'm drinking apple cider. Yes, I am drinking apple cider. <laughs> morning, hello, sister. hello, hello. 
<laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, I was driving last night. I didn't think I was going to lose service in a patch, and I lost service. I was like, no. Oh, my God. I, I kind of knew that happened. <laughs> yeah, I was on my way home, but I didn't want to leave you hanging, so I thought I'd pop in. I'm like, no. Uh, I, I, knew, I kind of knew you were driving. I could have said, I could have said that. Let me do this to you I could have said you were taken on a spaceship and your car was being levitated, but I didn't do that. <laughs> I'm let, when I when I uh, do the mic, I'm gonna let her talk because she's on her phone. That the space people. Uh, let me see what's in there. Do this here. Oh come on, come on microphone. I'm gonna let you. On, on it's okay. Mic. I got it. I got it. So so listen. Last night, um, I was out at my spot. It's a it's a really spiritual spot. There's um, a quartz crystal and whatnot that are underneath the ground in this specific area of land that I like to go to to meditate and you know to release energies and stuff. I'm out there and I'm you know I was like hey, I'll do a little live out here. So you know I'm I'm talking to people and I'm doing a live while I'm out there. There is all kinds of of Ashtar command activity happening in the skies. We had about seven ships flying overhead. There was um, two, or and the um, people in my live were watching this. There was about two or three um, ships that had landed in the wood line and were like zooming back and forth. And, and these are thick woods, mind you. So there's like there's a, these aren't vehicles or anything like that. These are actual right. ships in the yeah. woods, like zooming back and forth. And there's a ship right overhead, like right. Oh of, I would oh say gosh. about 200 feet above the tree line, just sitting there. And I, and I had the camera camera on it if my front camera picked the ship up watching the other one zooming around and I don't know what they were after but this is mm -hmm. the exact same spot where that fake airplane that split oh, apart man. that we had that we had went after landed at so I don't know what was going on but there was something happening last night there was seven or eight ships that were flying in formation that were Ashtar command ships just after that um, incident with the um, ship zooming around in the wood line right after that there was a formation of Ashtar Command ships that went through. Um, they were going through very slowly. I ended up leaving um, before I could see what else had happened because it was getting really cold out and I couldn't stand out there anymore. Oh, but, yeah, no, no, no. It, but it was there was something happening out there last night. Remember how we were both saying in your life and it also in mine that something was going on. Well, something was definitely happening last night. Yeah, yeah. and also yeah. Um, for we have a lot of people here that probably have never seen us on live, you and I, just to give people background. April and I met through TikTok, and um, I interviewed her about fairies, and this was over a year ago, and then she that's when she started having contact and being taken off the planet, and uh, by her space biological family, she has a father, a mother, and I do too on the same ship. So there's a whole story behind us. Um, now, we know that uh, this reptilian ship had to be, there was, a, I'm going to let uh, April tell the story of what happened here. Um, but I will tell you that the Ashtar Command stopped something from happening that could have been a real problem. I'm going to let April narrate it because she was right there and she was on the ship uh, with the command when things were happening here. So for those watching the show, uh, welcome if you're new. Uh, uh, also, April is live and she does lives during the day and at night. Uh, so also, I do my show only you know, at 11 o'clock, uh, and then I do sometimes to come on in the morning, and today I have the day off, thank goodness. It gets kind of crazy having to help people on the phone with customer service problems. But uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have April go back to April, and she can uh, narrate the first thing that happened. Many of you don't know what's going on. Uh, some of you do. For those that don't know, uh, we'll also get into what that debris was that uh, last Sunday came out of the sky and uh there was a person in north carolina that saw that uh we'll turn it back over to april let me see here hi guys so if you don't know what what has been going on so um a couple of nights ago this was um the night before the washington incident um there was um i was outside and i'm doing a live and there was a ship that went overhead it was a refurbished um, um government ship that went over 
um, over from Canada and it passed over my property and I got a picture of it. Um, actually, a couple of pictures of, of the ship that went overhead. Um, shortly after that ship went over, um, the Ashtar Command came and got me um, and they um, took me on the ship and we actually um, went after this, sh this ship. Um, but just before that had happened, um, I was out at the park that I was just talking about and there was a... Um, a um a ship or a, i'm sorry an airplane that went by and it looked like a re actual real airplane um but it then it slowed down um it when it, and we're i'm on live when this is happening we're watching this is like hundreds of people watching this happen and you know in person and this ship um, ends up breaking off its tail end and the tail end drops down into a wooded line that is like I don't know about a, about a mile from where I'm standing, but you can see it perfectly clear because it was a, a huge open field um, that was from where I was standing to the wood line where this thing landed or fell or whatever, and it landed in this wood line. Um, so all of a sudden, these Ashtar command ships come, and we're mind you, we're watching this on live. Like there's all kinds of ships that show up, um, and they're they're in formation in this circle formation. Um, and then a couple of the ships broke away from the circle and went over to where this um, this fake airplane was flying and it had broke off this tail and dropped something. So um, these these guys go after the ship and then a couple of them were zooming around where, it, where this tail had dropped at. Um, and we're watching all this happen on live, right? So, um, and then... So we end up finding out later on that this is um, this ship is transporting reptilians to an undisclosed location um, where they were going to start a new space station for the low vibers, which you know we all know are, is working with the government. Um, so um, then then the spaceship goes over my property. This is the refurbished ship, right? It goes over, and then the command comes and gets me again, and we go up off planet, and we actually go after this ship. Um, and we find I'm finding out the information as we're in pursuit of this ship that this ship has um, a device on it that that does not need to be out anywhere. Um, it's a pretty bad thing to have um i i have to really watch wording because i don't want yeah. you know, um, any issues with tiktok but um yeah, it, it had a device that doesn't need to be out um the ashtar command did try nicely to get this device back um they would not give it up um and then the thing in washington happened um and that was um the ashtar command um getting back this device um commander robar which is commander's father um was on was on ship with us when this was happening um and he he's got a kind of a weird sense of humor he kind of thought it was kind of funny to um have this rest of the ship go down um where it was stemming from because you know he this device was not a good device at all and he's he just wants to make a statement saying that the ashtar command is not having any any more bad things happen to this planet and um so he made a statement by um letting that ship go down where it did um so that was kind of like him dropping ship and saying we're out no, you're not doing this to this planet this isn't happening so the ashtar command has been on top of everything um we did we did retrieve that device um so for anybody who was worried about it we did get it back um and we took care of the issue at hand um so yay <laughs> i'm like super stoked that that actually happened and that i was able to be there and witness all of that yeah, yeah. and uh, uh it's it, and i'm just doing this so let me do it a minute wait a minute uh okay so uh, what you so all the things you've heard on TikTok from people about what happened with something crashing, all these TikTokers trying to figure out what was going on, that our news media will never tell you anything anyway. Um, Commander April uh, in Vermont was taken on board physically on the Astra ship uh, with her father. My father's on the ship. My parents are on the ship. Um, and they went after. She told you the story. They did get the weapon back, they had to destroy the reptilian ship. And the Ashtar Command is, doesn't like to have to do anything like that. Um, so, but they had to take that, that ship out. It was what they were gonna do, they were working with our government, what I call the secret government, and they, they were planning to do what they did in the Indian Ocean, 
which is being uh, right now the command is working very carefully to replenish and heal what happened with this other device, which was the same device. Uh, but thank thankfully, this device, which is the only other one left that was brought through a portal, was taken by the command and was destroyed. So the planet, uh, the command will not let anything happen to this planet. And uh, the reptilians were, uh, I believe they were quarantined and captured. I'll turn it over to April. Yeah, guys, so I'm stu I'm super stoked. It was actually my ship that took it down. Um, I, I literally was there when this happened. Um, it was pretty awesome. The Ashtar, we, the Ashtar Command, that including the commander, we are not going to have this happen to our planet, not again. So we took it out, we took it down, and, you know, um, the planet is in a better space now that this device is no longer out there. Um, and so the, the commander's um, main job at this point is to let people know that, you know, we are safe because of this, um, you know, because he has communications. Um, it is his job to make sure that you guys all know that we are safe because of and what the Ashtar and, 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 and not only that, um, um, let's see right here. Oops. Oops. Oh, uh, uh, and not only it. that, oh, good. The, and as April's saying, my purpose come to Earth before I even knew April I came here uh, when I was a kid. I didn't even know, I, but I always had a, a like for broadcasting when I was growing up for some reason. Now I know why. Hey, Taz, good to see you, brother. Um, I, was, I dealt with intergalactic communications uh, before I came to Earth. I was on one of the main ships for communications with our other different, um, uh, different spaceships or what have you throughout the multiverse. I was the main person that it was involved here. When I came here, you know, the communications is different. So I learned how to do radio and TV broadcasting. And um, my main focus with it is what I'm doing now, which is uh, my main purpose as a commander is to use my technology, which is this, to give you the truth. Uh, when I do this big show at, at night and the morning show here, uh, when I can do mostly at night, but when I do the show, we had like 500 people at one point on last night and the show has went viral since I've been on here. My purpose has been to tell you the truth about what's going on on the planet. April's purpose, too. <clears throat> She's the commander of her own ship. She found out. She's actually been able to learn consciously how to operate the ship. Uh, and so even though we're in human form and we're all having the human experiences, we are also not from this world. April's not from this world. I'm not from this world. I've been very out of the closet. And so is April. And I know many of you know you're not really from here. Even though you're physically here, you might be a teacher. You might be someone working as a waitress or a waiter. You could be somebody, uh, you know, working in an office, taking phone calls like me. Uh, you're all, you, everyone has a purpose. And so we're not going to, the Astro Command <laughs> is not going to allow this planet to be destroyed or harmed anymore. Uh, it's been going on for too long. And, um, <clears throat> excuse me, we are preparing for contact. The government knows about it. Uh, April and I know about it. Obviously, our families were, you know, I probably astral travel to the ship. I haven't physically gone there yet, but uh, we will be in April. doesn't know this either. We don't, they haven't told us yet. We have four other people in our group of five, and we will be going on off-planet probably. It can happen any time between now and early next year. I think we're going to eventually go. They'll just pop in and tell us it's time to go. We've all been preparing for months and months and months, the four of us. April doesn't have to prepare because she's been going on the ship for so many times, but we have to prepare. And uh, I can tell you that I'm uh, I'm going, whatever that I am told to be telling you, I'll bring back to the show here. And then also there will be a point uh, be before the contact happens for new people here. Uh, this is where you want to be with April when she's live or with me when we're both doing lives or either way, or when we, we do the lives together Saturday night uh, for Ashtar Command Night, we will keep you honestly informed of what's really going on here. Uh, there's a lot of speculative stuff on YouTube and on TikTok. Uh, stay away from it. You want some real information, uh, listen to what I'm saying, listen to what April's doing. You're going to get real information. We don't channel anything. We don't, you know, we don't have candles floating in the air, uh, or big crystal balls like in front of us with a turban on our heads. We're actually the real deal, you know, and uh, this is where you're going to want to know what's happening right here. It really is true. 
and I forgot what I was going to say because I was going into something here. And there's a there's reason, reason why I was going to say, say something, but I don't know what it is. Commander, um, I'm going to pop off now. I just wanted to um, to give you the latest and the latest news, and um, I've got to get going to the hospital now. Oh um, yeah, yeah. But I love you, well, and I just wanted to pop in and show my support. And I just, uh, more importantly, I uh, hope your granddaughter does well, and I hope she heals. And I'm sending you the blessings of healing energy. And I hope you got my little thing without going into it that I sent to you uh, just uh, for a bit of support. And I want to thank you for all the dedication and hard work you're doing. And I saw the photo of you going on the ship. If you can send me a picture or show it Saturday night, let's show some of those photos of you. I saw that when I was watching you, uh, you uh, going on the beam in the beam with your father. That was a beautiful photo. Let's show some of that stuff uh, Saturday night. But I'm going to let you go. And many blessings to you, April, Commander April. Be safe on the road, and uh, we'll see you later. All right. That's Commander April. And uh, she and I work really uh, close together on what's happening here. Um, so when she's on live, you can watch her. She has hundreds of photos and some video. Um, yeah, so Desiree, um, let's see here. Desiree, we're going to bring you up. Desiree Watson. Whoops. I, I'd rather, you know, I want to invite you up. Uh, I think it'd be great to hear you ask me that question live. So we're going to let people come on live and ask those questions. Hey, Desiree, welcome. Hi. How are you? How are you? We're doing good. I'm well. Glad to have you on the show here. So you have questions about the Mer people? Yes, because April told me that she said that my, <clears throat> she read my, did a reading for me and she was like, um, you have a pink energy. She's like, you're, she's like, I've only met two other people. She said that you're like from the Mer people. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I can see it in your face. You have that energy for some reason. <laughs> Excuse me. For some reason, you know, when you you know look at people, like I can look at your face from the little picture. Are you able uh -huh. to come on live on the? Can you come on the screen? Are you uh, appropriately? Yeah. Okay, good. Okay, let me see how I can do it. Uh, there we go. I don't have any makeup on, but it's okay. No, that's okay. <laughs> Natural is good. No, I can see it in your face. You know, there's an energy about you that I mean, uh, she's better at that stuff than I am. But I I do my own thing uh, in terms of reading things in a way. But I can yeah. see the energy, and uh, I can see you probably not only had a connection with the Mer people, uh, with the Mer people, what's beautiful about that connection is people don't know much about the Mer people. You you do have the connection. You can feel that energy within you, I think. And, uh, you know, we're eventually going to mm -hmm. meet the Mer people because the Mer people have been on our earth for a long time, but yeah. they've been very uh, hesitant Hidden. to show themselves because uh, we know how human beings on the earth usually treat people they would look at the mer people and say, oh, let me catch one, you know? Well, yeah, and then they, they're they so depicted as, like, kind of, like, evil. Like, they look mean, and well, I don't well, know. But you know what? The, the, that depiction is all AI and CGI. Yeah. The mer yeah. people do not look like evil monsters. People have been taking liberty with all this new technology, uh, and when they show the mer people, they make them look like they have monster faces. Yes, and I've seen a lot, of, like... a lot of it on TikTok. All that stuff, folks, if you see it, you should shame that person who created that video and yeah. shame them big time. Shame those people for making videos to scare people about mer people, which are lies. They're beautiful. And if you see anybody on TikTok doing that, you need to tell them to take it off because it's all a lie. The mer people are the most beautiful beings in our waters around our planet. You know, that, that gets me really going when I see lies like that. You know, these people are so creative but they use right. their creativity to show fear-based things that are not true mer people yeah. are beautiful you know so are they like would be or they be like from lemuria like is that like a, like back then or like uh the, the lemuria a lot of uh, the lemurians went to the city of telos there are many uh mer people that some of them are connected with lemuria but the mer people uh, are also in a sense um they are they are here they're not originally from earth but they are actually from other places when the universe but they do live here they've lived here for a long time and then they try to live here in peace and harmony but these people creating on tiktok these videos now that i'm seeing 
taking the yeah. body of a mermaid or a merperson, and then the face of it, they make it look like a big teeth and everything. That's all yeah, lies. Yeah. That's not real stuff. That's all CGI AI created. It's garbage. Yeah. You know, and if I see those people producing stuff, I will message them and say, what are you doing? You know, yeah. you might be a real smart person, but no, don't post any videos creating mer people as looking like monsters. It's just like um, with the space family, with our star people, there are people that create these, they use images when they talk about ETs. The only images I see on YouTube and on most places are of negative looking gray, ETs. Like, like the gray looking. That's the how grays or, or the reptilians. Yeah. That's all you see. And that's all a bunch of baloney. You know, that, that stuff irritates me, you know, if I get irritated. Yeah. That that's the thing that irritates me is that yeah, people, you can't find really any information on it, like no real true right. information. You yeah. know, but the mer people, when contact happens, the mer people want to make contact too, but they're not going to be right now. They're not going to come up to the shorelines of a beach and say, uh, "This beautiful mer person comes up," and then a bunch of crazy people start doing things or a yeah, guy or whatever. They, yeah, you know, once they do, do that. That they'll be attacked, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> yeah, Something, they're going to be yeah. attacked because people do those things. We have a planet with 7 billion people that some of them, and not everybody's like that. Thank God there are millions of people that are awakened that would never do that. But there's still billions of people that don't understand, you know. Uh, and uh, also, friends with Trace says, so you probably message her later. I can give you a little bit more information about the truth about them. I I'll don't know do if you're that. asking me to. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, yeah, that'll be good. Um, also, what was I was gonna say, um, the uh, now is my like say my daughter, like, would they be she be from the same like lineage or, or is that different? Like, how does that work? Um, our kids, like, for example, I have a daughter who's 26 years old. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, she grew up with me having crystals and stuff like that, she grew up with me being totally who I am. And when she got old, she wouldn't want to talk about it. But my daughter, um, my daughter loves mermaids. Like, yeah, yeah. She, she. And my son she is autistic, also. So, autistic. like, he's very. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And she's my daughter is like an old soul. Like I can tell she knows stuff. You know, she's seven. My son seven is years 10. old. See, oh, beautiful. Yeah. Well, there. And she's really children, like, loves so, yeah. crystals and stuff like that. Like she's like, what is this one for? You know? And she's just she just loves mermaids too. It's just. I just thought it was interesting. <laughs> yeah. No, the, the kids are beautiful. The kids really, they know they're going to teach their parents. The kids are going to be here after contact happens. These kids are going to live in a beautiful world. And uh, that's the most beautiful thing. Your kids, your children, if you have kids, they're going to have the most beautiful experiences. And um, my daughter is 26. You know, we love her so much. She's just a beautiful soul. And we have crystals. She had, she got into crystals because she saw me with the crystals. She's yeah. got some beautiful. She has crystals all over her room. I mean, she's got me crystals too. Everywhere. My daughter like goes and she'll try to find stuff yeah. and like yeah, you know, because yeah. I like hunt for rocks and stuff. I always have since I was a kid. So <laughs> yeah, see, you know, so it's a uh, it's a beautiful thing, and um, you know, and you have that energy about you that's uh, you are you know truly awakened, uh, and um, it's just a beautiful thing. You can see the vibrant energy. In your face it's uh, it's all beautiful well i'm glad yeah. everybody i'm glad that's able to be seen <laughs> yeah, oh yes and those who vibrate with that energy you'll see it you'll feel it you'll know it for me i sense everything so uh you definitely you know your kids are going to see contact you're going to obviously see contact and uh it's a good time to be here yeah so i guess i what need to meditate more would i be able to contact like i don't know do they come meditation to <laughs> so my i always like to listen to so, for example, uh, let me just do this here. I'm, I'm going to bring the music up. You can hear it. I'm using uh, meditation, ambient med space music, ambient meditation space music. If mm -hmm. you use this kind of music, it'll get you in a calm state, and you can actually uh, meditate, breathe in and out, usually a few times out of your nostrils, sit down, keep your eyes closed, find a place you want to relax, and you will be taken into another state of consciousness. And if you're taken to another state of consciousness, now when I listen to this music, I'm already being taken into another state of consciousness. So listen to this for a minute, everybody. I'm going to teach everybody something while I have you on the show. If you listen to this music, see, she's already being taken out. 
you're going to be taken into another state of consciousness. When you're in that state of consciousness, you're not in the 3D world consciousness. You're in another state of a higher vibrational frequency. And when you get into the higher vibrational frequency, you're now able to relax. It doesn't matter where you relax, anybody, just relax. Turn your brain off and then connect with your higher self because you all have it. And many people don't do that. They don't connect with the higher self, which is your cosmic inner self to connect you with your star family. I'm just very high strung. So, so it's sometimes it's so hard to turn my brain off. <laughs> well, you know what? But you know what? You can you control your brain. One of the things I do, I control my earth based brain. I always do. That's the thing. That's the thing one has to learn how to turn the brain off. You control the brain. You can talk to your brain just like you were talking to each other. You say, OK, uh, brain, turn off for now. I'm going to do this meditation. I'm not going to. You, so you need to decompress because you're high strung. You need to take time to decompress for yourself. Yes. And, right. and like Francis Ferris is saying, as she's driving, it's all about vibration. Absolutely true. Yes. Can you do that? Can you allow yourself to, to do that? Take time to listen to the music. Close your eyes. Breathe in and out three or four times through your nostril. Listen to the higher frequency music. Like uh, I like to listen to Christ, Cosmic Christ did ambient music, which does exist. Very high frequency and you'll see yourself go into that state of consciousness. And if you practice it, you won't be stressed out and you won't be high strung. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. Thank That's you. your homework. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I will do my homework. <laughs> All right. I want to thank you for coming up, Desiree. Thank you. Thank you again. Oh, Hope you're you most have a good welcome. Day. <laughs> uh, I will. The day off, I'm going to have a great day. Not, I, it's my day you. off also. So, yeah. <laughs> I um, back tomorrow. Might, my wife is working, uh, and then I'm going to go out and maybe go to the crystal shop locally and uh, hang out okay. for a little bit. All right, we'll cool. take you down, and that was Desiree on our right. show. And uh, let's see, we have somebody. Uh, let's see, we have Kelly Catherine. Kelly Catherine, uh, we're going to bring her up on Encounters. This is our morning show that we're doing. We're usually on with our big show at night at 11 o'clock, Saturday night. Uh, me and April do a thing called Astro Command Contact Q&A. And well, Astro Command is watching our show now. Matter of fact, this show is being watched on our spaceship. Let me bring the volume down here. So my father and the rest of the people on the ship, this one specific ship, are tuned in and monitoring everything on the show here. Kelly, welcome to the show. Hello, sir. Um, may I come up in a few minutes? I apologize. Oh, yeah, you want to bring it down? I'll bring it down. You just tell me oh, that I when know you want to come how. up. I, I do apologize, but I do uh, want to no speak. Problem. All right, thank you. Okay. All right, let me take her down. So if you want to be a guest on the show, you have to be over 18. Uh, no trolls, no people that are under 18. No smoking, no drinking, no vaping, no drugs, no uh, religion, no paranormal discussion, no politics. If you've been in having encounters, yes, jazz, uh, uh, my uh, my family, uh, they have a, a control room. They are watching the show right now on a spaceship. I think that's your question. <clears throat> yes, uh, it's called Cosmic Christ Ambient Space Music. Or co just put Cosmic Christ Ambient Music. Cosmic Christ Ambient Music, and you'll see it on YouTube, a bunch of it. And if you use that music, uh, you can get into that state of consciousness. Uh, Lindsay, thank you. We appreciate that love. Thank you so much. It's almost 11 o'clock. Let's see here. And good morning, everybody. Tonight we'll be on at 11 here on Friday night. And that, and my, all my shows are on TikTok. Uh, my shows are recorded and they're posted on YouTube. My YouTube channel, if you want to watch past shows, is Ashtar Command Spaceship News. Ashtar Command Spaceship News on YouTube. That is my channel where you'll see all our past shows since uh, last year. And again, if you've had any contact uh, with space people uh, to go on, uh, let's see, Astral Orchard. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. I'm just going to do this. Uh, I just invited you to come on. You'll get a pop-up screen. Press it. And I got you on the air. So let me see here. Astral Orchard Star something. Hi. Hey, uh, hey how are you? Good. Oop. Are you there? Before, oh, yeah, I'm there. And what's your first name? My my real name's Mariah. Mariah, nice to meet you on Encounters. 
So tell us your background and what you'd like to share with us. Um, well, I am a flow performer. Um, I'm a flow artist. I spin fire um, in my free time. And I'm from Hamilton, Ohio. Oh, great. And um, this happened probably, I'd say, like seven years ago. Mm -hmm. um, I was actually walking home from just maybe a block away at, at my friend's house. And um, we were just all there playing video games and having a good time. And we usually, like, you know, stayed up pretty late. And my parents didn't, they didn't really care, you know, because it was right down the street. But one night we let, I left by myself on my way home and uh, I had, it was probably, I'd say 1500 feet away from my house. So I, I didn't have mm -hmm. far to walk at all, but um, it was midnight and I was walking and I hit the corner. And as soon as I hit the corner, I felt this very weird feeling. It almost felt like I was like frozen in time. Um, oh, wow. And I looked up at the sky and there was an object over me and it had three lights on it, but it wasn't moving at all. It was just like hovering above me. Mm. And mm. I felt all different types of emotions. I felt very scared for a minute, um, but it was it was only there for a split second and then it was gone and I could not see it in the sky anymore. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, wow. Yeah. I, Did I didn't you... um, actually like have contact, but I definitely seen it and it, it definitely uh, spooked me a little bit. <laughs> now, when you saw it and it left, did you have any missing time? Yes, yes, that's that's what I meant by like it, it felt like I was frozen in time and I didn't right. really I couldn't really account for what had just happened. <laughs> right, because you had missing time. So I I'm reading your energy. Uh, let me just uh, I'm reading your energy. And um, I think you were taken aboard their ship, you know, and, and even though it seems like minutes, I think you were. Um, hmm. Let me ask I mean, you a question. I would, I would not contest to that honestly because the, i've had a lot of weird things happen to me in my life after mm -hmm. the fact um i have a torn acl in mm -hmm. my right knee and out of nowhere I, I i needed surgery i went to go see a um a surgeon mm -hmm. and they said yeah you definitely need surgery there's no way that that can fix itself and then one day out of the blue, I it just stopped popping out of place. And I've, I, it hasn't popped out ever since. And what year was that? <laughs> um, that was a couple of years before that happened, when I actually mm -hmm. had the injury. Mm -hmm. um, so that was before a couple this of years experience. later, it stopped. Yeah. <laughs> And but this sighting, so this uh, thing with the ship, what day, what, what, what time was, when did that happen? I'm not exactly sure of the day. Like I said, it was like seven years ago, um, seven but years it was, ago. it was at night and it was at midnight when it happened, close to midnight. And was that after you were here that the thing healed? Oh, no, that was before it healed. Oh, uh, really? Yeah. So this is interesting. Right. Um, <laughs> I'm just putting this together now that you've been asking me these questions. Yeah, well, you're, you're, you're going to remember a lot of things on my show. Um, so I believe you were taken on board a spaceship. Wow. That... Yeah, you were taken. I'm just listening to you. I read energy. If you're new to the show, I, uh, I'm on at 11 o'clock. I hope you'll join our regular show at night. But I, uh, I read energy. One of the things I'm gifted with for a long time is I'm able to read energy from hearing people's stories. And I think you were taken on a ship. Now, um, trying to get an image of the space people that took you on that ship that was over your, your vehicle. Uh huh. I, I didn't see any um, silhouettes or anything. It was literally just the ship. Yeah. Well, you lost time, though. You, you, you wouldn't have remembered. Oh, yeah, I definitely lost time. And yeah, I felt you, it felt like something spiritual had happened to me. Like, you yeah. know, when you get ringing in your ears, Yeah. it felt like that. 
I think um, when you were taken on this particular ship, do you remember what the ship kind of looked like? Do you remember any colors or anything about it? I remember green and red lights. Um, mm -hmm. There was only like three lights on it, maybe four, and they were green and red. And this, the shape of it was like an, uh, you know how like flat earthers try to describe what the shape of the earth to people. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, it, it resembled that like a, like a saucer. Yes. A flying saucer. Yes. Yeah. Um, so you were nervous and everything, but right. after you were taken on that ship, <laughs> uh, that part of your body healed. Correct? Yes, yes. All right. And it it would yeah. pop out constantly. I had um, a period of about nine months where it was just constantly popping in and out. This was before yeah. I had seen the ship, too. Yeah. Um, but it, it's just really weird that I don't even have those issues anymore. And that, you know, the mm. doctors told me that I was going to have those issues for the rest of my life. So. No more. So let me get, let me explain something. I don't think you were abducted. You do have missing time. Yeah. Uh, for whatever reason, they didn't want you to remember anything. Right. Um, but do you? But um, I think you were taken aboard a ship, and they did something to heal that part of your body. Right. I've never had any negative connotations about extraterrestrials. I've always been yeah. super interested in them. Yeah. And I also think that they they're not here if they are here you know they're not here to do anything negative to us you know yeah i, I don't think you had think i that. don't think you've had any negative contact i think when we think of missing time we always re relate it to people <laughs> that were abducted but your case uh your missing time was uh well, you could have been off planet um for more than two or three weeks and wow because yeah time because is different time is different there's no time right so i think what they did is uh give me a moment i'm reading into the information You're i'm fine. going to scan and try to find out where they are from give me a moment that's why i have my eyes closed folks i'm not sleeping <laughs> you're fine mm. I meditate first, a lot, so I, I get it. Yeah. <laughs> first, the ship was pretty massive. I mean, it was it was bigger than yes, your car. Yes, it was huge, and it was gone. It was like as soon as I looked at it, mm. it was gone. Like it, yeah. it was like the speed of light that it the, that it left. This ship, the image that I'm getting of the ship, the bottom of the ship uh, had I I call them circular things, circular are these uh -huh. like circular things. The ship was big and had these circular things rotating like a, like an energy or something below the yeah, ship. Yeah, the three dots. Now that I'm now that you say that, I I realize that the three dots were moving in, in like a circular motion. Yes. They were I, in like I, a, a triangle shape and they were moving yes. around in a circle. Yes. So what I was seeing and when I closed my eyes, I'm able to see things. Mm -hmm. I saw the ship, the ship that you uh, had was above you, that mm -hmm. ship had circular motion so these things were going in a circular motion right uh, let me let me get more information about the space people that were on that ship okay. so i'm doing is reading i'm reading into where they are who mm -hmm. they are I'll, I'll be able to tell you in a minute okay I believe that they were, give me a moment. I keep getting two things happening here. Mm -hmm. Palladian and Andromedan. I believe they probably, I'm getting more Andromedan, the Andromedan star system. Uh -huh. Andromeda, they were Andromedan. Wow. Yes. And what are some characteristics of like those 
those beings? Do you know? Yeah, Andromeda, uh, they're humanoid like we are. They're taller than we are. They're about nine to ten feet tall. Damn. That's yeah. interesting. You, you will be able to communicate with them. Give me a moment. What you'll need to do is meditate. Okay. And you'll need to focus. You're going to need to meditate for about 30 minutes a day or night. And okay. you're going to use uh, use very uh, higher, higher frequencies of music. Okay. Uh, what you're going to do is remember the ship. Mm -hmm. By remembering the ship, you'll be able to communicate with them. As you remember the ship and the experience, you can actually telepathically communicate with them. You wow. will have now. If you've never done that before, it's going to take some time. Right. I completely right. understand this. So I don't expect you to be doing it like in two seconds. But when you right. do it, you'll be able to communicate with the Andromedans. They actually healed your um, on their ship for whatever reason. Uh, you did have missing time, not because they wanted you to. It's because they live in a different space than we well, do. Well, I also had a very shattered psyche at the time. Um, mm -hmm. I had just went through pretty much hell and back. Um, yeah. And I was really broken inside. And mm -hmm. I think possibly they were trying to spare me some of those emotions, you mm -hmm. know, because I was already in a really screwed situation in my, you know, reality. Yeah. Right. You know, so, uh, yeah, no, you're, uh, you, you're all good. It was, I had to think, I had to really deeply go in, uh, re, you know, to see what the ship was. Right. And I had to also then after seeing the ship, the ship is not what I was more importantly was the beings inside the ship, who they were. Right. So they were Andromedans. Wow. That is Absolutely, yeah. really cool to hear. <laughs> yeah. Well, I want to thank you for being here. And um, well, thank you for accepting me. I really appreciate it. I appreciate you. I'm glad you shared your story. My show's on at 11 o'clock at night for everybody, the big show that we do. And it's the same show, but it's I'm usually a nighttime person. I've always Dang. been that way since <laughs> I was a kid. We're going to let you down, and thank you for sharing. And thank let me know you. what happens. Keep All right, touch. I will. Bye-bye. All, right. All right. All right, welcome to the show if you're just tuning in. I think we'll uh, we'll stay on till 11.30. I don't even know how long I've been on now. I'm just like totally lost. Well, thank you, Acid TV. I appreciate it. I almost got tongue twisted there for a minute. Uh, let's see. And if you wish to be a guest on our show, did I sleep? Yes. I, after I got off last night, I went right to sleep. So the commander does get some sleep. Uh, the, the Mer people, are they Syrians? I don't know if they're Syrians, but the Mer people, uh, I mean, April knows a lot about them. Uh, I just know that I've known about the Mer people for ever since I was an adult. Hey, Kuz Crush, good to see you in Canada, the brother. Uh, but the Mer people, they have always lived in our oceans. I don't know in terms of before they were here what planet they came from, but they have been here for a long time. I'm not really sure where they uh, come from. Man, it's good to see everybody here. I'm going to be getting out of here pretty soon so I can go outside and enjoy the day, go to the crystal shop, just have a good day out here. So, yeah. I am just me has a question. Uh, hey, I am just me. Silverback, thank you for the share. And if you want to, and thank you for the gifting. You know, I'm really surprised. I have 10, I have nine hanging lights that I would like people to take. And that helps uh, show the support for the show. So I have hanging lights right now, TikTok lights. Uh, but any gifts will be appreciated on Encounters. Uh, Judy Jude, uh, thank you for the hanging lights. We appreciate it. Thank you, Judy Jude. And again, if you want to share your story, if you've had any visitations with space people, real visitations. Uh, mer, mer is M E R, mer made M A I D, and or mer people M E R P E O P L E, mer people, mer made.
Uh, thank you, I am. I appreciate that. Commander, you uh, be speak one for us. Uh, you'd be the one to speak for us on contact, yes. Myself in April. You feel kind of drained to me, are you? No, I'm not drained. I'm relaxed. When I listen to meditation music and I'm doing this, I get very, very relaxed. I think I'm relaxed already. I'm already relaxed. So I'm very relaxed, and I'll, I had some coffee this morning. Uh, when I get outside, I'm going to enjoy the fresh air and uh, of New England here and uh, just enjoy the day. Oh, that's the team. Beautiful, man. I look forward to you giving me that information. Diane, uh, good to see you. Uh, Diane, thank you for your comment. Soulfully says the, they come from Manaka. So we're still on here. And if you wish to be a guest, I'll do one or two more guests, interviews. Uh, thank you, Kelly, Catherine. Thank you so much. Thank you again, Kelly. I appreciate that so much. Thank you. Say, say, good to see you. You were on last night. Thanks for <clears throat> bringing, uh, joining us this morning. And we appreciate you. I also want to say hello to my father on the ship. They're watching the show right now, Luna. Uh, Robar, my sisters, and my brother. Good morning. I say good morning or good afternoon. They're in space. There's no morning or afternoon. They're on a spaceship. What was I thinking? So a lot of things are going down the pike now. On the next two weeks, April's mentioned it on her lives, and here we are going to just let you know that you're going to see more spaceships in the next two weeks all over the planet. They'll appear where they want to appear. These are Ashtar Command ships, and you will definitely see them. Make sure you have your phones charged up. Make sure you're focused. If you're going to videotape any of them, make sure you don't move your camera all over the place. Try to keep still with the camera. Hey, Deborah, welcome to the show. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Everybody, Robert, welcome to our show. Gravy4-20, welcome. Hey, Calgo, good to see you this morning or this afternoon. Yeah, it's still morning. I'm surprised I don't have any more people that wish to share their stories. Uh, if you do want to share a story, I'm very interested in contactee stories. A contactee is somebody who's had contact with space people, positive contact. Is there anybody out there that has had positive contact? Jay says, I've had contact. Okay, Jay, we're going to bring you up, and there's another person I'll bring up after that. I'm doing this thing kind of randomly. Had visitations, not positive. Uh, if Jay didn't come up, so. Uh, Vigilante. Okay, so there's two other people. I see you. Don't go anywhere. I will interview you. Uh, Jay, welcome to Encounters, number one spiritual UFO talk show on social media. Hello, how's it going? We're doing good. And whereabouts are you located? I'm in the Midwest. Midwest, okay. So give us, give our audience around the world a bit of background about your story. So uh, there are several encounters that I've had. Uh, there have been spiritual encounters, and then there have been, you know, encounters with, uh, you know, uh, unexplainable things. Right, so we want to focus on, just let you know, no paranormal discussion, on the extraterrestrial level of your encounters. Well, so they kind of go hand in hand. Um, so, for example, I, I listed it in your chat earlier. Um, so just as January, uh, around uh, Feb, well, around January 31st, I would say, my family and I were uh, coming back from a vacation in uh, Puerto Rico, and I saw an orb uh, next to the plane. We were sitting in mm -hmm. the front of the plane, and uh, it was with us for about 45 minutes. Wow, 45 and minutes. And it was, uh, you know, like a burnt orange in color. Yeah. 
you know, um, and it was it was just super super odd, super weird, and uh, you know. But how I, close, I, how close was that orb close to the the airline? Oh man, it, it it was like right up under the wing. Under the wing, how big? And was it that? was over the Bermuda Triangle. Uh, really? It was about uh, yeah. It, it, to be frank with you, it was about the size of uh, probably the cockpit of the airplane, but in a spear. Right. You know, it, it yeah, was a literally spear, yeah. a, a ball. It was kind of like a bubble, you know, like yeah, when you blow yeah. bubbles. Yeah, but it was yeah. like, you know, a, a burnt orange in color. Yeah, it probably came from, a, there's probably, there was a mother sphere, a larger ship that was cloaked. And, um, I think that that thing was monitoring you, like was following the space of the following spaceship, following the commercial airliner. That's what I'm getting. It came from a mothership. Yeah, it, you know that's what it seemed like, but I don't know. I feel like it was just you know something else. It, it it's it's hard to explain, but that's where the paranormal activity comes in, and and they're just being you know paranormal activity, like even uh within my home. You know, sometimes I smell things that that aren't there. Yeah, so we try to stay away from the paranormal. But the thing yeah. with the RNG orb object, I'm getting that it is definitely a unmanned object from a mothership. You were over the Bermuda Triangle. There is a galactic portal over the triangle. Uh, when the airline pilots disappeared with the five air, their their uh, airline, I mean their um, uh, air force uh, planes. They never found the pilots because they were taken by a spaceship. The the uh, the actual airplanes have never been found either, but they didn't ever crash or anything. Uh, in terms of what you experienced, which is beautiful, you had an orb from a spaceship that was monitoring for forty five minutes. Your now was that orb? Were you the only one seeing it? Were other passengers no, seeing my, it? My just... wife and I both saw it, but I kind of feel yeah. like it, it was like guiding us. You know, like mm -hmm. that day it was a windy day. It was storming, mm -hmm. raining, um, and and like just the takeoff, everything just went smoothly. And it was with us from Luis Munoz uh, till about forty-five minutes into the flight, and then it just disappeared. Wow. Yeah, when it disappeared, did you feel safe at that point? Like, man, I feel... felt, I felt intuitive. I felt safe. Like, I can't explain the 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 amount of safe and just calmness that I felt. Yeah, and I just want to say to the person in the room, because this show, because of my background, I, there are tons of people on TikTok that deal with paranormal stuff. I don't do paranormal. I, it's all separate. For people that think it's all connected, in all love and light, it's just totally separate. If you're in my world, none of the people in my world in this topic in the media of UFOs, we don't talk paranormal. And I honor people that do, but that's for another day for another show. But I'm just telling, I'm responding to somebody, Jay, in my audience well, here. Personally, I feel like it's connected only because of the the inner conscious feeling that you feel when you're in the presence of, of these supernatural activities. You know, everything's thing, so, so majestic. Yeah, so, and that's so much, it's, then there's like really nothing, I know what the supernatural definition is. But really, these are different activities. So when a person, I won't get into the paranormal, but I will say this. When people are in that realm, it's a different vibrational frequency. And, and when you're in the vibrational frequency of the cosmic and galactic, it's totally different. There's no way it's even connected. Now, I've spent a lot of years in this thing. I've been in contact with you, and I saw space people on a ship back in the 60s when I was a kid. You know, I went upstairs in my brother's room, and there was a spaceship in a cul-de-sac with men and women that were actual space people. And uh, that's why from where I come from, the paranormal has nothing to do with any of this. The supernatural is is also another word that kind of gets iffy. Uh, when you're dealing with the cosmic realm, it's really cosmic realm. When that orange orb that you're talking about, I, I'm, I read energy, uh, you know, is totally from a, a big ship. Now, when you have other experiences that are different, you know, you know, frankly, people do have experiences that sometimes happen, but they're separate. If they're separate things. So if someone in their home, I'm not going to get into the whole thing with that other thing that they'll say, oh, I had that thing happen, but I also had the cosmic thing, but they're both separate things. They're not connected. 
if people try to connect all of this together, it just isn't. From, from all the years of my experience, you, that's why they have subjects, you know, you have subjects about meditation, you have subjects about science, you have subjects about space, everything, there's different things that you learn from. But when it comes to the space people, I have space family on a ship. So my space family would never say to the earth person that everything like that is connected because it's separate. The space people on their planets don't have anything called paranormal or supernatural. They live in a planets where they have nothing like Earth. They live in a harmonious relationship with the creator. Uh, their planets are lush. They're vegetarians. They don't have all these mixed up things on Earth. We have so many things mixed up here. We don't know how to get to the clarity of it. So I hope what I do here on my show is to clear people up about there is things and subjects that are relevant, but not on encounters. I try to keep everything away from the paranormal. I don't want anything mixed up with the paranormal for a bit for, you know, for the reasons I, I am, you know, well, it's yeah, it, it honestly just depends on your experience that you've had. Yeah. You know, yeah. I, I'm very intuitive with the earth. Uh, yeah. Well, that's, good. you know, yeah, I'm, I, I love all animals. Uh, that's good. Usually when I've walked into per se uh, uh, an area with a barking dog, I, I've always been the one that's been able to kneel down and give it a pet despite yes, its it aggression. Is. Yeah, uh, that's a good thing. Yeah, and and I feel like like sometimes you attract these these paranormal or these unexplainable activities because of the energy you withhold and your ancestral DNA and where you come from. Uh, so I, I have uh, ancient, you know, DNA that stems from Europe. You know, I'm here in America, of course, but. I feel like it, it, it gives me a bit more intuition uh, right. as far as like, you know, kind of having a third eye in that sense. You ever been driving in a vehicle and, uh, you know, felt like someone's looking at you and look left and they're looking right dead at you, you know, or, or just picked up on on certain behavioral changes that people may display in a room and whatnot. We all have our own energy. Um, right. I, I want to ask you a question. Have you ever heard of General Admiral Byrd? Oh, I, I know about that. He went into the inner earth. I know his whole story. Uh, the Agartha Network, which is where he went to, the subterranean cities, the city of Telos. I've been in this thing for many, many years. I know all that stuff, yeah. So I had a dream about that, right? And uh, mm -hmm. it, it's ironically, it was before I even heard about who Admiral Byrd was. Mm -hmm. I just had a dream about planes going into kind of like what would, would be a cave system under ice. Right. Mm -hmm. And then and when I woke up, the middle of my forehead was just like numb and mm -hmm. it wasn't a headache. It wasn't pain. It was just like, a, I don't know, like, you know, kind of like like an opening of air type mm -hmm. of feeling in the middle mm -hmm. of my forehead. And yeah. uh, I, I, I thought it was super weird, you know, and then uh, a couple days later and this was like in 2021. 2020 a couple days later uh i i started you know seeing stories about general admiral bird on tiktok yeah, bird, yeah. yeah, yeah, bird, and, yeah. And, and, and i found that to be very interesting yeah and he it, is. He, it's enlightened and me his his story is amazing if people read his story he did meet people he met space people uh he went then to the north atlantic came to a landmass and when was taken on a flying saucer ship into the inner earth where he met people that lived in villa, in uh, natural environments where they uh, uh, these are space people that are vegetarians. Uh, he got to see a lot of things in the earth, and then he came back and wrote his story about it. So, yeah, Emma Bird is is amazing. And I have like this feeling, like 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 we should have a calling. You know what's bad about you know the world today is that. We're also against each other, right? Instead yeah. of banding up to really figure out the truth, and it's the truths on all ends, right? But like, for example, why is there a treaty in between all of these countries for there to be no exploration in that area? You know. But you know what? It, you know what's really funny? I saw a a commercial. Evidently, they have cruises to Antarctica. I don't know where in Antarctica these cruises go to. Like, if you go on a cruise to like the uh, Caribbean. They have a cruise to Antarctica, and it does exist. Now, where they take them, who knows? They probably don't take them to where all these other things are happening, but they take them to see Antarctica, 
they have a, a cruise that goes on a cruise ship for so many days to Antarctica. But I'm sure it's not where the space people are. Yes. You know? And, 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 and see, that's the thing. Like, I'm scared to call them space people because I, I you know, I'm not like a flat earther. You know, I, I don't know what to believe these days, whether the world is round, flat. You know, there's people that have many conspiracy theories. We live in a dome. Yeah. Whatever no, they're space be. people. Yeah. They I, are I space people. Yeah. I don't yeah, go down those paths. Yeah. 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 You know, I look up in the sky a lot. I'm always amazed yeah. by the moon. Every yeah. day the moon amazes me for some odd well, reason. The, well, the universe should amaze you, I'm sure. I'm yeah, sure of course. Yeah. yeah. Everything does. And, uh, you know, I, I look at, you know, what's going on around me all of the time and one thing i can say is you know we are failing as a people to really challenge our government and really challenge what's being taught around us you know i grew up with textbooks saying that there were nine planets and all of a sudden there's eight right where was the mist there you know what happened to us testing hypotheses and and like i feel like a lot of the great scientists have either been you know dismissed in, in sort of ways or shut down or or, or 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 just just were put to be quiet in regards to certain situation they say there was an engineer that developed a light of speed travel in the 40s he was a nazi engineer and then he got recruited uh by i guess nasa or or the united states around the time of the ending of World War II. And he had apparently had, you know, sufficient enough knowledge to give us that extra boost in, in, in t time, right? Whether it's aviation, which is some of our uh, oldest technology right now, right? Well, you, you've heard of, you've heard of uh, Nikolai Tesla. Oh, yeah. You know, so the thing is, and, and I, again, I want to give information because one of the things I do in my show uh, I know things. So, for example, Antarctica, for people, are, everyone's talking about Antarctica, you know, TikTok, wherever. The thing is, yeah, we have uh, scientists in sections of Antarctica from all over the world. We have parts of Antarctica that go into what is the inner Earth. On Antarctica, they are space people. Uh, I know this for a fact. But our government, the reason why the government doesn't want people over in certain areas of Antarctica, they've already made contact with the space people there are cities that are highly advanced within the areas of antarctica that are off limits to public knowledge there's also entrances in the north and south pole which admiral Berg talks about which exist where the space uh, where you can go into the agartha into the inner earth in tibet there are entrances that are guarded by tibetan monks that you cannot go in that take you into the inner earth uh there there's a lot of stuff that is going on in terms of the earth being flat i don't get into that whole thing on here but i will say if you talk to the space people of the Astar command who i work with their planets are not flat nor is the earth i don't know and that energy takes away from exactly that, like our, that energy takes away on. from that energy takes away from what we ne really need to focus on is that in 2026 uh, we're going to have contact brothers and sisters and these people are not coming from flat planets and i'm not getting into that I'm just telling you, whatever you believe you've been told about that whole thing, that's the illusion, that's the deception on this planet if you believe that stuff. Yeah. Uh, all the planets are either round or oval, but they're not flat. I've always been a firm believer, too, that whatever beings that are not human, that have, you know, the intelligence and can walk and com communicate and build and whatnot uh, and can make technological advances. I feel like they're multi habitat beings like they can come from the oceans or they can right. come from the skies. Right. That's I feel right. like they can dwell in any environment. Well, the mer people, which I talked about earlier, the mer people live in our oceans. They're very advanced. The mer people are very loving. There are space bases in our oceans in the Indian Ocean. There's an Ashtar command base a city in the depths of the ocean, way, way down, that exists. And, uh, you know, I think you'd love uh, hearing my uh, sister, April. She's on Friends with Furries. Listen to her. You'll learn a lot about contact. You're going to learn a lot from me about this. Uh, like I said, uh, I'm not a newbie on this, but I want to thank you. I want to get outside, I think, a little bit. I've been on here since I don't know what time it is. But uh, I've been, you've been, been a blessing, Jay. I've been a great guest. I enjoyed talking to you. Oh, yeah, likewise. And, and you know, uh, I just wanted to mention, you know, I'm not too sure if you dismiss 
any, uh, you know, paranormal activities, but think outside the box. I, I, I don't, I don't dismiss it. I just don't. <laughs> you know, I know I, I don't dismiss paranormal activities. I just want people to understand it is definitely a separate thing from cosmic and galactic. It does exist. I don't dismiss it at all. Yeah, well, think- I'm just saying it exists, but it's separate from. I don't want to mix that up into what I do here. It would yeah. just be not not a uh, good thing. Understood. But also, you know, just wanted to mention that you know I would like for you to uh, think outside the box and and kind of read into it, you know. And it's about our third conscious, you know, and what happens to us when we die in our energy. You know, when when you get buried, when you die, right? There's, uh, unfortunately, you know, creatures that, you know, eat a corpse, right? And then, that, let me ask you a question. Do you ahead. believe that uh, this is where I'm going to bust the matrix? From the Ashtar Command perspective, there is no death. That's only on Earth. On Earth, exactly. people just say, so here's, here's where I have to bust the matrix. Uh, there is no death, people. That is something in the programming system. Just like there, we've been in our textbooks since I grew up in the 60s. We've been taught certain things to believe that were not true. Do you really, does people, I'm going to say this, for if you believe there is death, there isn't. When you leave your body, you are able to go to the next dimension, which is the next level of you. Exactly. So a, you see what I mean? So there's no death. Our energy our, stays. Well, no, our energy leaves. Our energy leaves our body, and it doesn't stay anywhere. It goes beyond Earth. Now, the only reason some people get stuck here is because they don't know where to go. But many of the people, if they're fully, like, for example, if I leave my body a year from now, physically, I will be going on a spaceship back into my space body. I already know this. I, that's called being in stasis. Many people that are star seeds, you have bodies in stasis. If you don't know what that means, I'm going to explain it to you now. Your bodies are in a spaceship that are waiting to come back and, and wake up. You're alive and well. You're taller than you are here a man or a woman or whatever, when you wake up into your body in stasis, you are now on that spaceship and you will remember that you come from a specific planet. So there is no death. That's all part of this whole thing. Just like religions break people up in politics and everything else, throw that stuff out the window. The one thing you'll learn about me is I am busting the matrix all over the place. So I do, and I will stick with this because this is what I know to be true, uh, is that, uh, the paranormal is real. It does exist. I do watch some of those shows once in a while on cable, like Ghost Hunters or whatever. But it is a separate thing. If you mix them all up, you're going to have a problem. I'm telling you, you'll have a problem. If you mix it all up and say, oh, let's put it up. It's like taking a drink of water and saying, let's put a little bit of this, a little bit of that, and a little bit of this in there. You're going to mess it all up. You know, honor the separations of both of them. They're not connected. Yep. Have you, uh, and I know you were trying to get off and get to the next person. I'm sorry. But have you looked That's into right. the Bayside Mall situation in Miami? Where is that? In Miami? I, I, when it was happening, I did, but I'm not paying more. I, don't, I tend to not pay attention to it too much. There's so many greater things going on, which is contact, way more important than what happened there. I think people need to. That's why when everyone on the bandwagon on TikTok with it, I stayed away from it because I'm a professional broadcaster. I worked the Ashtar Command. I, I know, you know, certain things happen in there, but there's so many bigger things to look at than that whole thing, which is what's coming in 2026. And I want people to focus on getting it together, meditating and focusing and clearing your consciousness for contact. That's so important right now. If you don't do it, you won't be ready for it. That's the big picture. That's the big story. What happened there, that's, that's probably, that's, that's like uh, minor compared to what's going to be happening next year and in 2026 yeah for sure and well what one of the witnesses uh you know stated was that the the figures were kind of appearing and disappearing at the same time and like kind of showing up as a shadow yeah. and and you know appeared to be getting closer and closer and seemed like a physical solid you know um, amount of mass but then again would fade out yeah no, I know, I know about the whole thing. The only thing is I've not really stayed on it, and I, and I purposely was being guided to stay away from it from the command. It wasn't relevant to the bigger picture uh, and the things that are really important again. So I wanna, I, what I'm trying to teach people to do who are watching this and the person saying, why is 2026 specifically? 
So we, we, our space people, the Ashtar Command, which is the positive space people, uh, it's all been planned out beyond anybody's existence here, whatever decade you're living in, way beyond any of us, including I, was alive here on Earth. It's already been destinated and planned out for a long, long time, way before we can even understand it. So why is it now? I couldn't tell you why it's it now, but it is now. After billions of years of our existence on Earth, this is the time when contact is happening. You know, the people in uh, the Pentagon, some of them that are whistleblowers, the people that are uh, Dr. Greer, who I know personally from years ago when I interviewed him when he was unknown, uh, you'll hear if you see people saying we're going to have contact who are formally in uh, military or Pentagon or Air Force, they know things. The fact of the matter is the Pentagon is trying to get ahead of the story. The fact is you're going to see contact and it's going to be peaceful. There's no invasion of Earth. I've seen that stuff on social media. That's a lot of lies. That's fear-based stuff. If you see any of it on TikTok, do not fall for it. Do not believe it. I feel that way as well. All right, don't believe it. We're going to have good things happen here. And, uh, and I know a lot of stuff's out there, and a lot of it's being created for fear. So that when the spaceship start the next two weeks, if people take time to get out of their heads and you you know just load up your uh, you know make sure your phones are charged up, you will have the ability, depending where you are around the world, there are spaceships from the Ashtar Command that will be visibly shown themselves, different types of ships, and then they're going to go back out into space or disappear. So what they're trying to do, and what my mission is here is to get people. Uh, relaxed and ready for contact so it doesn't take you by storm. You say, oh, you see all these ships in 2026 and saying, what's going on? You know, they don't want you to be in fear. These people are men and women. They have families just like you do. They're just more spiritually advanced and technically uh, advanced as well. But they want you to be not fearful of them, but to understand that they're coming here to assist you and it's time for contact. It's time for us to reconnect, not be afraid. Agreed. Don't anybody out there, I don't want anybody out there to be afraid. Now I'm talking not only as the host of the show, but because I work with the Ashtar Command and my family's on a spaceship and I'm speaking truth. All right, hey Jay, I wanna thank you, man. I'm gonna get out there, I think in a few minutes. All right, buddy, yeah, take it easy. And uh, yeah, just as, uh, you know, you mentioned, you know, for everyone out there, you know, if you feel something, you know, be transparent about it. And not only that, but don't think that, you know, we're against anyone, you know, uh, no one's no. against anyone. Uh, uh, the amount of, of security and, 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 and comfort that I felt when I saw the spear after yeah. departing from, you know, Luis Munoz airport yeah. was kind of like, you know, that feeling when you get back home after, a long day yeah uh, absolutely yeah just total comfort total serenity and um you know i was so happy i didn't even think to record it i didn't even think to bring yeah. out my phone you, you never think about that I, I, yeah, happens, I was totally yeah. distracted by the fact and and like yeah it didn't even want to compromise no you, know, like, you did you did good, beautiful dude, sight. good all right man well i want to thank you for being on here jay i'm going to do one more guest i think it's yahoo Yahweh, I think it is. I've already had time from my star family. All right, we're going to bring it down, brother, and thank you for being on. I appreciate it. All right, thank you. Bless everyone, man, and uh, everyone uh, stay so And let's see, let's see. I'm going to see. Uh, all right, and I'll see about this person here. I've already had contacts from my star family. This is my last guest of the day, and then I'm going to get out there and go to the crystal shop uptown and get out and enjoy the day here in New England. Uh, and uh, oh, good evening, or good evening, good afternoon. How are you? I'm doing wonderful, brother. Hey, man, you're doing yeah. you're doing a great job here, bud. And like you said, people don't need to be afraid. So the very yeah. first time I seen my people, they 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 came to me at night, and I was sitting there looking at them, but I was afraid because I had never seen nothing like that. Then I, I started hearing them talking to me. You know what I mean? And I, and I got even more afraid. Then I started seeing them in the daytime. And now, people don't realize this, but their ships are already here, some of them, and they're cloaked to look like clouds. I can yeah, tell they, them plainly. They are here. You're, they are cloaked. Yeah. There's a lot of ships here. 
Yeah, man. And, and people, I try to explain to people, and they say, man, them just clouds, them just clouds, like no, they're not. I can show you the difference in the cloud. I said, see right. this one, when it goes in front of the sun, you see a shadow on the bottom of it. Right? right. The normal clouds, they're clear all the way through. They're, you don't see no shadows on them. That's right. And you know, mm -hmm. and also, what's your first name, by the way? Um, Roy. Roy, nice to talk to you, Roy. So when and I've documented uh, what I call cloud ships or terrestrial spaceships, uh, the cloud ships, if they are cloud ships, they have a well-defined formation. If you see a regular fluffy cloud uh, and you see the cloud ship, the cloud ship is trying to look like a cloud, but it's not. And the yeah. fluffy clouds, you can, you've seen fluffy clouds, everyone has. Those are not, uh, those are not chips. But uh, yeah. I have actually, in one of my lives I did uh, this year, I was out at a community garden and uh, all of a sudden the uh, cloud ships uh, were, were appearing really very in very dis distinct formation as spaceships. And they were appearing, and we had like 400, 500 people watching it. And uh, I recorded, I took pictures. So they, mm -hmm. what he's saying is true. Now, when you say you've had contact, have you had physical contact? Um, yeah, I, I've, as far as seeing them, no, I don't. Not seeing them. I, I mean, I have physical space them. people. You haven't seen the space people yet, but you've had contact in terms of the visualization of the spaceships. Well, no, I seen one. They op they pulled up close one day, well, one night, and opened their window, and I could actually see their head. Yeah, I didn't Wait touch them, but let's I seen get, them. Let, let's get into that. So, what year was that? And tell us a description of the space being that you start opening the window. Um, bro, it kind of looked like the one, you know, the, like the alien that's got the elongated head, real long head, like on the movie so, Alien and Predator. They okay, had a head so, shaped like that. Okay, so was it was it like it was it a Zeta? The Zeta have big heads. The Zeta, or was it when you say a long head? Was it a it man? It was long, or a like um, yeah, it was long from front to back, not what, not side to side. Yeah, it was, and it had like a curt, like a banana shaped head, like you know something. Mm -hmm. it's, 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 I had a picture of it, man. If I can find that picture, I'll try to send it to you. And so when you saw when you saw it showing its head. Uh, you know, that's kind of a weird looking uh, ET. So tell us about it. What was the energy like? I mean, how did you feel when you saw it? Um, I was just, I weren't afraid at first, but then once I um, took, I started taking pictures of it and I come back and started examining the picture. That's when I got afraid because I didn't know what I was looking at. And how I realized it was, I walked outside on my front porch and I seen yeah. a bright light coming up to me real quick. I was like, bro, what is that? And it got right there behind the tree. I said, but that's the moon. I thought it was the moon. It looked just like the moon. I said, that ain't no way that was the moon for it to move from way out of sight to right here in like less than a minute. I knew right then it wasn't the moon. Yeah. Um, and, I'm going to try to – Um, let me cut my camera on. I think I got a screenshot yeah. where I took – Um. And see. I'm also already talking, Steve Cohen. So Cologne. So my family and April's family and there's a group of five of us that are going on. Uh, well, she's been on the ship over a hundred times. The Astro Command family I have is on a ship right now. Uh, that's because they come from far away beyond Earth. They're coming here now, and I'll be going on that ship probably uh, next year at some point with uh, four other people. Oh man, I think it's on my other telephone. I believe, bro. Hold on. It might be on this one. No, it's on my other telephone, bro. No problem. I'll tell you what. We'll bring you on again. I'm gonna. I'm, I'm looking outside. It's so beautiful out in New England here. And oh, uh, there you are. There's the man. Nice to see you, man. It's really, yeah. really beautiful. So, yeah, you know. And uh, you're watching Encounters for folks that are new to the show. We're on. We have a really big show uh, at night, uh, eleven o'clock nightly Saturday night tomorrow night. Uh, April, who was on here earlier for a little bit in Vermont. Um, I, she's the one who is a contactee with our, our Astro Command. She's been going mm -hmm. off planet physically in Vermont, northern Vermont, for over 100 plus times already. And she's doing mission work. There's another group of four of us, uh, Roy, that you probably will find out about. And we're physically going to be taken off planet. These are human people. They are beautiful men and women. They have children. They're mm -hmm. not looking like uh, ugly looking ETs. Uh, yeah. Very different. You know what I mean? 
Yeah, I know. Just let me share a little something they showed me that I could do, but I didn't know I could do stuff like this. Okay. Again, this is uh, for entertainment purposes only. Yeah, that's all. Entertainment purposes only. That's all. See, people say that's just the wind coming off your hand, but that's the energy coming off my hand. Entertainment purposes only, like you said. And entertainment purposes only. <laughs> you know, we always have to use that word. Yeah, I know, bud. I get in trouble for doing that all the time, man. So that's why. But I just want right. to show y'all that we can do stuff like that, bud. Once we tap into them. Yeah, and once we wake up to the fact that we're not nearly human beings having a human experience anymore, and we realize yeah. that our, when our conscious wakes up, folks, from listening to all the 3D stuff in textbooks, growing up in the 60s and everything, all these things we were supposed to believe to be true, we've been lied to on this planet for over 70 years. Yeah. 70, over 70 years. Mm -hmm. Everybody, I thank you, man, for being here. Uh, I appreciate you very much. And you're we're welcome, following buddy. you. And uh, you're now a friend of the show, so we appreciate that. Yes, sir, man. All right, we'll bring you down gently off the ship. Okay. And uh, you. you're welcome. All right. I'm going to call it a day here. <laughs> I'll be on tonight at 11 o'clock. Uh, and uh, we'll be on tonight. So I appreciate all the new people. If you have a story to tell, join us tonight at 11 o'clock. Tomorrow night at 11 p.m., it's Ashtar Command Night on Encounters. April and myself will be giving you the latest information from our star family. And uh, I guarantee you, what we give you is absolutely the cosmic truth. Yeah, take care. Hey, Mitch, Mitch, everybody. Have a good day. And remember, keep your eyes to the skies. Make sure you're not driving, though. All right, take care.